Great. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I'm going to call the meeting to order at uh, four minutes, four minutes after five. Um, we've got our sound problems behind us. Uh, we do have uh, some guests here. We have uh, Steve Dennis and I'm sorry, Samantha. Samantha. I'm sorry, I don't know why I can't remember your name. I apologize. Samantha and sir, you are? Oh, Larry Becker. I live on Lower Cypher Grove. Okay, welcome. Welcome. Conservation um, Commission. Oh, yes, I'm on the Conservation Commission. Okay, great. Um, and uh, we need to approve minutes from. Yeah, and there's somebody who's Moto G Stylus. Yeah. Yeah, we got a couple of those on. I'm sorry. Who is Moto G Silas? Hello? That's And then we have Bob Bob Thompson. Bob, hi. Sorry about that. Um we do have uh to approve our minutes of the August 15th. 2023 regular select board meeting and also the August 16th and 17th emergency meetings. But let's do the regular select board meeting first. Is there a motion? I'll move we approve the minute for August 15th. And is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Victor. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of August 15th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, the August 16th emergency meeting and I do not have a good list of who I think that was a vote. Here it is. I got the August 17th one. I don't know the August 17th. And that this is everybody was there. Okay. Well if everybody was there that's all I get. I'll move the 16th. Okay, is there a second for the 16th? Okay, thank you, Victor. Uh it's been moved and second to approve the minutes of August 16th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We've approved them. And then the 17 was the one you weren't at, Randy. Correct. Yes, correct. So is there a motion on the uh, August 17th minutes? I'll move it. I'll okay. second it. Okay. We're developing a pattern here. It's been moved and seconded to approve the August 17th minutes. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, so we've approved all those minutes. And we need to approve our gen agenda. For the September 5th, right? I'll this one up my nose, 2023. Jeez. <laughs> he came down from the sky. Um, select board agenda. Are there any amendments to the agenda? To the amended agenda? Is there a motion to approve? I move that we uh, approve the uh, agenda of today. Okay, and a second, please. Yep. Okay, thank you, Randy. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the agenda of tonight's meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've gotten through the uh, boilerplate. Uh, approving a letter to USDA's Natural Resource Conservation Service in which the town offers to sponsor the emergency watershed program in place of the Middle Middlesex Conservation Commission seeking federal funds to help safeguard lives and property from imminent hazard of additional flooding and soil erosion. And I presume that's why you were here. Well, I've been uh, volunteering to be a technical uh, person on the, on, the, on the letter, so to speak. And I am with the Conservation Commission. Okay. And uh, that I, Bridget brought it brought this to us. And so we went forward and a letter was sent from Adrian Nagita as our chair to uh, and our Natural Resource Conservation Service, the old, yeah. the old Soil Conservation Service. Yeah. And so they've had this program for many years where um, if the property is not damaged, but the river is coming close, then they can get into looking at getting debris out of the river, getting gravel out of the river that's appropriate and riprap next to the house is built. So what's been happening is they have gone, I've gone out twice with them and Phil Hayek went out once. Yep. And I've gone around town. People were contacted by Adrian 
and in turn, um, they agreed to be visited. And so we've been looking around. And I don't know, the day I was out, maybe two or three might have fallen in in their criteria, which is pretty tight. Yeah, pretty tight criteria. And um, so uh, another day I went out to maybe one or two could have fallen in the criteria. So um, and then another aspect of it is that I went out with them and I saw what might the town can all be part of this. And that is because if there's town infrastructure next to that stream, but it's not damaged, then perhaps money can be put towards protecting the town infrastructure. So there was a spot, spot there that I saw, and then um, I was out with um, an RCS person, Abby. Um, uh, Abby, yes, and uh, Abby Cook. And Abby Cook. On the phone too, or on, on Zoom. Oh, okay. He works with Mike. Oh, there, okay. Yep, yep. So um, I didn't know that. Hi there. And so uh, she saw it and she was actually running to move forward with it. And I said, well, we got to put that on the list. And, and I don't know how much she put more on the list. I've looked at uh, Adrian McGee's list of houses and pieces of infrastructure to look at, but we added the, this one town piece to that list, I believe. But again, that's whether the town wants to participate or not. Is another, is another piece. My sister always called me during select board meetings. I think she would learn. Um, so that sounds like maybe eight or 10 houses, potentially. Yeah, I mean, they make the decision. They will write a letter back to the Conservation Commission, and we would let people know whether whether they would fall in, and then there's steps after that. Uh, they have to, there's a 25% match. Yeah. So, yeah, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, um, we emailed around. Um, uh, it was Adrian's list and then uh, Mike's office, which I, Bob, I believe you're Mike's supervisor, correct? Correct. Um, and um, Mike forwarded us a list of folks that he said, okay, this doesn't mean that they're admitted, but we would like listers cards for, and that's the shorter list in the email. Um, but um, Bob, has Mike mentioned anything about um, whether or not you guys have gotten that information? I got the uh, Oh, thank you, Sarah. I, I assume he got the listers cards. I, I, I don't know. Okay. And, um, just um, for folks that are in the room, Bob, would you be willing to just give an ABC on um, from um, what it is and how much money and the criteria? Well, um, in a night, well, I'll tell you what, I have I have a presentation, uh, it has a couple pictures in that presentation. It'll show you what we're looking for approximately. And um, I won't go through the entire presentation, but let me um let me share my screen and, and show it to you. And then that might give you a better idea of what we're looking for here. Uh, I think, I think this will work. Yeah, we see it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me. Okay. Again, I'm going to skip through a lot of this. Um, um, so, um, we can we can work on both um, uh, uh, public or private property. Um, although we have to work through a sponsor, usually in Vermont, usually it's 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 uh, it's the um, it's the towns. Uh, we can't work directly with the private landowner, and then we have sixty days from the date of the watershed event, which I believe was July eleventh, for the for the sponsor to submit a um, uh, a letter of request which the Conservation Commission in Middlesex has already done that. I'm guessing um, they want to switch over to the town to do that. I, I, I don't know, but uh, but uh, the, the deadline's coming up here in a, in a few days. Um, just for your information, we did put in a request to extend that deadline, but I can't guarantee 100% that's going to get extended. Uh, I think it will, but, um, but anyway, um, so... Um, I, I'll skip over that. Uh, again, we're trying to reduce imminent threat to life and property, and a property is defined as an artificial structure permanently affixed to land, uh, a house, a building, a road, uh, a bridge, whatever. 
Um, does this program does not pertain to crop fields and, and stuff like that. Um, so uh, it needs to be economically defensible. In other words, we're not going to spend uh, $400,000 to, to, uh, to save a $200,000 house. That might be a bad example, but um, so that's the reason why Mike's asking for the lister cards. Uh, it has to be environmentally dis defensible. Uh, so we have to make sure we're not uh, taking out any endangered species and uh, cultural resources and stuff like that. So yeah, the, um, it needs to be technically sound. Um, so we cannot rebuild something. So if the house is already gone, we can't rebuild it. If the driveway has already been washed out, we can't replace it. If it's been threatened, uh, and I'll show some pictures of what we mean by threatened here in a little bit, uh, we can we can help with that. But if it's already been washed out, uh, uh, our program cannot assist with that. Um, so um, again, we, do, we, we pay 75% uh, for construction costs, another way, and then the sponsor would have to pay the other 25%. Um, oh, this is very important. Um, unlike FEMA, we do not have the authority to just point a finger and tell you to go ahead and do it. We have to have a written agreement between the sponsor and NRCS before any work is done. This happens almost every event. The town just goes out and goes ahead and does it, and they come back and they want paid, and, and there was no agreement. So this is very important to understand that, that we, unlike FEMA, we have to have a written agreement before any work can be done. Um, so the sponsor is responsible for land rights. Um, you know, usually, like if you have to cross somebody else's property to get access to it, uh, securing permits, uh, the 25%. Uh, accomplishing the work, in other words, putting the work out to bid and, and so on and so forth, uh, responsible for the O&M plan, O&M uh, operation. And also um, the sponsor is gonna be responsible. Uh, we're very shorthanded engineering wise. So um, we're gonna ask the sponsor to uh, hire a third party engineer to do uh, this, the design work. Now we do have some administrative funds that can help, we can put toward this, uh, I won't guarantee it's going to cover 100% of it, though. Um, now, what a lot of towns do is they take this stuff that the sponsor is responsible for, and they'll do a reciprocal agreement with the landowner. So they'll they'll ask the landowner, okay, you you put up the 25%, and you take responsibility of the O&M of the project, and then we will go ahead and allow this to happen. So that's, that's generally how it happens. Most towns do this. Um, and, and, and usually we do it locally led. In other words, you, uh, the sponsor would hire the contractor, the con you would, you would pay the contractor and then we, we would re reimburse, uh, you for the 75%. There's also a thing called force account where, uh, the sponsor can use their own forces equipment to do the repair. You pay 75% of that. Um, uh, mo well, mostly what we're looking at in, in what we do is debris removal, either removing trees and gravel from the stream that, that's threatening uh, uh, a culvert, a road, a house, or something like that, or we're looking at stream bank erosion. And again, I'm going I'm going to skip ahead, just show you. This is kind of what we're looking at. Uh, this was a, a project in Irene. What we look at, we look at this. What kind of threat is there to the house? And um, Basically, it we we feel it's reasonably uh, assured that the next storm, next flood that comes through is probably going to take that house out. So we feel that this was eligible, and um, and I'll show you what we did here in a little bit. And then the same thing here, it's it's reason reasonable to us to assume that uh, the next flood comes through that, that garage is gone. So that definitely is eligible. Um, so and again, it has to be economically and environmentally de defensible. Uh, so here, here's what we did with this one project. This was before, and this was after. We came in with riprap, and we uh, we, we uh, armored the uh, so, uh, and we eliminate that threat to that garage. And here's this one. Uh, again, we have the threat there, and we uh, we come back with riprap, and uh, we eliminate that threat. Uh, here's another one. We felt that there was a threat to the, both the road up there, the, the town road, and to this uh, large culvert. Uh, so we came af in after, and uh, we felt that it was threat. Uh, we paid 75% to repair that. 
this is another one. This is a little more complicated. Here in this picture, uh, actually, the driveway is blown out. So there's really, according to the program, there's nothing we can really do. Plus, uh, plus the the building's like 80 feet away. So really, we didn't feel there's enough of a threat to qualify for this program. But this is kind of gets. Um, if, if you turn around, if you're standing right where the picture's been and you turn around 180, this is what it looks like downstream. Well, downstream, we feel, okay, there is a threat to that bridge. There is a threat to that road. And, and this part does qualify. So what we did afterwards, we came back in, we put riprap in, we covered it over with a... Uh, but in this situation, because uh, we had to tie the riprap into stable stream bank, we had to go way... Way, way up, way up here. And let's turn my pointer on. We had to come way up here and tie it into a stable stream bank. So even though this part of it didn't qualify, um, it, uh, we had to run this, the uh, riprap the whole way up to here anyway uh, to uh, stabilize this. So it was kind of a unique situation. Um, debris removal. Uh, a lot of debris, if it's threatening a bridge, a culvert, a house, uh, uh, we can help pay to uh, remove that debris. Now, if it's just an eyesore and there's not a threat, uh, we're probably not going to go in and take it out. Uh, here, uh, the, what's on the left here is woody debris that's been removed. And then uh, what's on the right is uh, sediment that's uh, or gravel that needs to be removed. So, so I, I think I'll I'll stop the program or um, right there and and uh, ask answer answer any questions uh, you might have. So I think I understand the building part pretty clearly. Um, right. Do I totally understand it? No, of course not. But I get it. Uh, we're, I've been doing this. I've been doing this for thirty years, and I'm not so sure I totally understand it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but in terms of in terms of town roads, gentlemen, I mean, we've done a lot of work already in situations that this might have been applicable if we could have waited. Right, the work on the Brook Road, for instance, and some of the other. But are there other places? that still are in imminent need of repair that might We're fall apart. the McCullough Hill Road, right where the McCullough Hill Bridge is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the stone fell that was up against the abutment washed out. Yeah. And that river is headed to cut uh, the access to uh, Great Brook and the rest of McCullough Hill Road out and where we just paved. And so we need to put some stone fill, put that stone fill back up in. So that sounds like it might qualify. That sounds like imminent risk to me, imminent risk to infrastructure. Pretty imminent to the treasurer. Uh, well, without seeing it, I can't, I can't say for sure, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be worth, it'd be worth uh, our uh, guys coming out and taking a look at it. Yes. Okay. And there's a great, there's a, and, and part of the reason for that is there is a very large gravel deposit bar just on the McCullough Hill roadside, right? That everybody's itching to get out of there. Yeah, yeah. So Bob, there's the other part of it. Yes, Liz. Um, Bob, does you one of the examples you used was like one of the giant culverts? Mm -hmm. Is that considered one of these structures? Okay. Right. Yes, yes. That that the town in that situation where we're protecting a town road and and the town culvert. Um, now, if this was if if that was a federally assisted road, we we couldn't help with that. But because if it's a town road, and I believe most of your roads are are going to be uh, owned by the town. So, um, um, I, I was going to say something, and I I I I completely forgot. Um, but anyway, um. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting is this, and this funding is only available when it's like a nationally declared disaster? Um, no. Uh, oh, that, that's what I was going to say. But, but unlike FEMA, we do not have to have a national disaster that um, our state conservationists can declare a disaster. Uh, uh, you know, if it's a really, really isolated storm event or something like that, our state conservationists can come in. And we've done that in the past where 
it didn't qualify for a national disaster, but uh, we've come in. I think we did Montgomery in '97 was a uh, was a um, very isolated case. It did not qualify for a national disaster, but we were able to go in and uh, still go in and, and do some repair work. Uh, what I was going to say was, um, if it's at all possible to get FEMA to do the work. Their process is a lot more streamlined than ours is. Uh, we got we got to jump through a lot of hoops in order to do it. So I'm not saying I'm, I'm refusing to do the work, but um, if, if if you can get FEMA to do it, uh, in, in my opinion, that's the way to go. Uh, otherwise, yes, uh, we can come in if if the bridge is threatened, if the road is threatened. Now, if it's already washed out, there's nothing we can do. But if it's threatened, like the the examples we just showed there, uh, yes, uh, we uh, it should qualify for our program. And and how much money do you have? Well, it's like you apply for a certain amount, or how does that work? They, they well. They go to the sites and they say, okay, about this. And then the money comes from the feds to the states to the town. Gotcha. And the reason the Conservation Commission is looking to make the substitution to the select board level is uh, Conservation Commission A, I don't believe has a bank account, and B, the, they're concerned that if it's at the Conservation Commission level, that they will, if somebody faulted and didn't come forward with the 25%, the select board would have more teeth to be able to put the muscle onto the person that that that, that owes the funds. Okay. So I understand, Bob, and if I'm wrong, um, it comes in. You guys say, okay, according to what we're looking at, where these are the numbers, we're gonna we put in the paperwork to the feds. The feds then go through what they have to do. They give us the money, and then we distribute it all in one lump sum. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, great job. Um, but yeah, um, um, we, we, we still we're still assessing the sites. We got to do an environmental evaluation, economic evaluation. We got to do cost estimates. So it, it plus we have I think we're up to 80 or 90 sites that we have to evaluate. But the idea is we put this into into a portal and then that goes to Washington and then Washington approves it. And then they send us the, send us the money. And then once the, once we have the money in hand, then we can start going out to the towns and um, um, start working on some of this, uh, start working on the designs, start working on uh, uh, hiring engineers and stuff like that uh, to get the work done. Did okay, I lose, yeah. did I lose you or? Um, Oh, we're here. Okay, um, there you there you are. Okay. Okay. So my follow up to that is, we for the letter we've already submitted it. We're already enrolled in the program. This is just a substitution. Peter has the same letter that we submitted, and it's just a switch over that Peter's going to sign where Adrian had, and then um, uh, so we'll get that into Mike's office by tomorrow morning. And that'll meet, that'll meet the deadline for, I believe it's the 7th. Yeah. We've got the list so far, but that we still have more time to add to the list, correct? You can add, yes, you can add to the list. Yes, yes. And, basic, and, um, and what point will that window close? We're, well, of course, we have 60 days to get this letter in, and I'm told 60 days after the letter, uh, we have 60 days to process all these sites and get those in. So once we have another 60 days to get that all processed, and then we get the money and we start uh, start working on, on the projects. Um, so, yeah. Um, and Sarah, you had concerns about matching funds, I believe. Well, that 25%, but also administrative because, you know, that kind of staff to buy out to this big, and I can't administer this grant. I can't hire an engineer for things out. So Adrian and I have already talked about it, and we, with the conservation, I, with the conservation commission, will be your, I'll be your person. That's awesome. Yep. Now, now, so, this, okay, okay, I'm sorry. But that doesn't answer the money question. I don't. Excuse me, just one question. So, I understand that we can require, I mean, if it's obviously us, if it's the town, then the 25% matches all ours. But but we can decide, and presumably not on a case-by-case -case basis, but on a blanket basis, that if a project is approved, it is the property owner's responsibility to come up with a 25% match. 
And I believe I believe most towns collect that up front in an escrow. I don't think they wait till after the fact. I think I, I could be wrong, but I believe most towns that we've worked with, they collect that money up front so they don't get stiffed for the bill. There's a reason for that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Oh, do it to um, what about is there interim expenses that the town's going to have to pay for? Because as of now, we need to be very cautious of every dollar that we commit to yeah. until we can get our penal money back. And you so know, Bob, I, I don't think oh. that we should be committing to pay these bills up front if right. we don't have. The funds to do it with. So, Bob, how does it, excuse me, Bridget. So, how does that work in terms of cash flow? Because the situation we're in right now is we have huge bills for road repairs, and FEMA is telling us that no matter what, even if we submit all the paperwork and do everything, it's going to be months and months before we receive any of that money. So, when I mean, for, first of all, I guess the question is, if you accept one of these projects, when would the work likely be done? It's not going to be done this fall or this winter, right? It would be next year, probably. Well, ideally, it's 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 supposed to be an emergency emergency program, but like I said, it, it takes us a while to get the DSRs done to get all the work done. By the time we get that in, it gets. It, I think it gets approved pretty quickly. We get the money back, and then we have to mobilize forces to hire engineers and stuff like that. So, uh, you are right. It, it could be very late fall. Could be this winter we're doing it, or it may have to wait till spring uh, before anything gets implemented. But as far as the money, the administrative costs. The 75% is technical. We do have a little pot, a pot of administrative money that we can uh, that we can uh, pass on to the, the sponsor as far as paying for um, uh, administrative costs. Uh, primarily, I'm thinking uh, the engineering. Um, we, we can pass that on. Um, you know, if, if we if we can group a bunch of uh, projects together, maybe that would help economy of scale, uh, make the engineering a little more affordable that way. Um, but but that being said, that letter that you're sending in does not commit you financially uh, one iota. That's just the only thing that letter uh, that you're sending in tomorrow is just basically it's obligating you to go out with us when we come out to assess the sites. Uh, the landowner and you as a sponsor, you can you can actually cancel the agreement up to the day they go to start construction. Um, because, um, you know, if something happens, the bid comes in much higher, much higher than than you were anticipating. And the landowner landowner or you as a sponsor decide that we just can't afford to do it. You can cancel that right up to the so I I I understand the concern about sending these letters in, what kind of commitment that is, but uh, 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 the, the, there's really no, with this letter is not committing you to any kind of financial commitment. So let's say we, we go ahead with this and we have three or four projects which we, which we undertake and agree to sponsor as part of this and the landowners agree to contribute their 25%. How long does it take after, I mean, do we have to pay the bills and then get reimbursed? Do we submit the bills to you? Correct. But but once the once the project's done, I'd like to think, uh, and, and the proper paperwork is filled out, I, I think we can make that payment pretty quickly. And what's your definition of pretty quickly? <laughs> I don't mean to put uh, you on the spot. No, no, no. Uh, no, Mike could probably answer it. Uh, it all it all comes down uh, to getting the you know our frustration is getting you know of course the busy doing is getting the sponsor to submit the proper paperwork and it's a lot of time it's like a, a game of tennis where we keep batting it back it's not filled out right uh, but if the town you know the, the if finish the project uh, we'll go down and do final inspection uh, um, day two. And if all the proper paperwork is, is submitted on day three, uh, we, we submit that all to the portal. And hopefully um, hopefully within uh, a, a couple of weeks, you should see a, 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 a payment in your account. Okay, thank you. The, yes, now, I, now, again, now again, that's for the 75%. Um, no, well, we, 
Believe me, I heard what you said about collecting the 25% up front. That's exactly what I was thinking. So I was just going to say that um, I've really never been so impressed with responsiveness um, from Mike and his staff. And um, and the fact that you're available tonight, Bob. I That's think, great. Yeah, and I then agree. we've got three of us, <laughs> the rest of the Conservation Commission, along with the gentleman's name that was, he's the former conservation chair. What's his name, Larry? Oh, right. Uh, Lee? Yeah. No, it was, is it Lee? No, it's uh, uh, he's a, like, He actually yeah. is a water engineer. Oh, Nash Flag. Okay, Matt, Matt, Matt. Yeah. Was, and Matt's on it with us too. Yeah. So I think that I, I'm comfortable saying that I think that we should move forward. And again, um, the landowners, the list is, is um, I didn't count it, but it's not short. So I, there, there was a lot of interest. I don't know whether everybody, the shorter list with the Worcester's card, that didn't mean that the other folks were gonna be excluded. Um, but it, it's a good number of people that'll be getting yeah. some assistance and they want it. There's nine on the short list. Thanks, Randy. No. Well. And it's in our best yeah. interest, honestly, yeah. because these are our taxpayers. And well, and we're preventing, we're preventing by doing this work, we're damage. preventing damage in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I just, again, uh, we're in a tight spot about this. <laughs> about this FEMA situation. And I just want to be sure we don't commit to something that we can't. The other thing, Bob, in the paperwork that I haven't talked with Mike about, but there was an in lieu of that your 25% match could be work on site. So yeah, the, it, it can be, it, it can be in kind, but uh, that's when you're really in a hurry to get it done quickly. Um, it's a lot of, a lot of towns just, can't make it work, you know, when they need uh, 30 or 40,000. For the foreseeable future, we've got so, many, so much work on our plate to take on. Yeah. Bob, can I just ask one quick question? Those pictures that you showed, um, maybe like the most basic one, or like the house, for example, that was yep. sort of yep. falling in, mm -hmm. how much would something like that cost? Do you have any idea? Well, the price of riprap is really going up in the last uh, five years with COVID and everything. Um, you know, uh, that one house, maybe uh, 40 or 50,000. The garage is probably uh, 60 or 70,000. Um, I'm guess I'm, I, I'm, I'm taking a wild ass guess at that right at this point, really. Um, but th that's what that's part of what Mike is working on right now is um, actually trying to come up with now it's still a ballpark. It's still crude, but he's trying to come up with cost estimates on all these projects. And those are the numbers we're sending into Washington that they're going to and th that's what they're going to use to uh, give us our obligation to fund these projects. So I, I, I hope I answered your question and didn't. Do a sidestep on it. Yeah, I didn't know if it was five thousand or two hundred thousand, right? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm in the ballpark. I don't, I don't think it's two hundred thousand. Brandon, uh, Bob, I just had a question. Two questions, actually. Uh, you said paperwork's a major hangup for you guys. Do you guys have the capacity to assist with, you know, making sure that people fill it out properly? Mike, Mike, Mike is so diligent. The, the only thing you have to worry about is if Mike decides to retire, but Mike is really good at uh, helping you. He, he, um, he, he, he all but fills it out for you. So, uh, you know, he's really good at explaining stuff. Um, uh, you know, and going back to what you said earlier, we realize this is very overwhelming for you. You got a dozen different uh, federal um, agencies coming in trying to explain a dozen different federal programs and we realize this is overwhelming for you it's 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 plus you're, you're short staffed yourself but you know we want to try to make ourselves available as much as we can to help you through the process thanks the other question that i had was um if a project's accepted uh is there a time frame that they have to get the work done within you know, once that agreement is signed, do they have, I mean, projects vary depending on, you know, the impact of the project, obviously, but is there any kind of sunset that we need to worry about? 
the, I, I believe the program says 220 days, but uh, I'll be perfectly honest with you. We're still working on 2019 uh, EWP work. So uh, projects can be extended. Um, it had to be a really, really good reason why we just, uh, just cancel a project. So I, I don't think, uh, obviously, for our benefit and for your benefit, we want to get it done as quickly as possible. And, th and that's our goal. But there, you know, there's just sometimes either the design doesn't get done or the landowners having trouble raising the money. Uh, we just don't want to want to, you want to want to give everybody the uh, absolute um, uh, ap um, uh, ability to, to make it work if we can. Uh, so again, I think I sidestepped your question again. Oh, we, we hear you. Um, yeah, Vicar. So I get this, understand this. Now, you said there was a few people, like nine or ten. There's nine on the short list. Nine. That's what I heard. Yeah. Town, so, town included. Yeah. Perfect. So if you put in an application for all of these, is there a possibility they got all accepted? And it's, then we would then we would we would be holding uh, we would be paying these people which is peter said we don't have the money to do uh is that a possibility that uh, we would be i don't, I don't want to use the the term on the hook but we would we would be paying out until we got money back which may be a bind for us could be it's, i mean a, for just just a comment on that First of all, I can't imagine they're all going to happen at the same time. I mean, this is going to be spread out over a long period of time. And second of all, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, Bob, but I, I just can't imagine with everything going on in Vermont now that it's going to be possible to do these projects this year. I mean, maybe you know I'm, something I don't know, but I'll I'm, tell you all I'm, the time I'm, I'm, are booked I, out, you know, way into the future. So, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. Presumably after this FEMA voodoo is over. Well, uh, just to follow up on on your point, Victor. You know, I, I absolutely the town holding the the bill on stuff like this is it's you know uh, it's something to think long and hard about. I think that requiring landowners to to handle their twenty five percent and put that in escrow is absolutely part of what we need to do. So the town isn't in a position where we're holding the bag at the end. Um, it's also my understanding, Bob, based on what you said or something you said earlier, that just because a project is selected doesn't mean mean that every project that's selected actually has to move forward. Uh, generally, you know, I, I don't know why, but it seems like 50 percent. You know, some of the landowners are going to come out and say, I can't afford to do this. Um, uh, you know, it's still it's still got to go through an environmental review. Um, we we we're still doing an economic review. That's the reason why we're getting the lister cards. So there's still a possibility the short list could get shortened even more. So um, so there's we're still a little bit of the process left to go yet. But um, it, it, it like I said, it seems like fifty percent of all the projects that we look at in, in any given town are the ones that actually get uh, implemented. I was going to, I was going to say, especially with us requiring the 25%, I bet that short was gets short whittled down. Yes. Very good. Say um, they choose not to go ahead. We've already got their 25%. They don't submit paperwork. We just give them back their money. And, and it's just, it's a, the, the to the, administration costs at this point i understand and bob maybe i'm wrong on this is that you guys are going to do the estimating uh provide numbers we will pull together paperwork talking to people about their 25 percent commitment uh based on that budget they'll know what that 25 percent is and then they can decide at that point whether or not they want to move forward yep yep and then, exactly. you, and, and and then what, once once we get the obligation of money, I mean uh, that's that's half the battle right there. Then we have to move forward with the project as far as where you're you're going to have to hire an engineer uh, to design this up, and then the engineer will follow through and certify, uh, provide construction inspection and certify that the uh, project was installed correctly in the end. 
Um, I, I can't guarantee that uh, the administrative funds that we're going to offer is going to cover 100% of that. I just I just want to make that clear. And say the gentleman who's the contractor, say that the contractor comes back and the money they're requesting is a little higher than was what was anticipated, you would cover that? We if 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 the bid comes in higher, uh, we can go back and revise the agreement to pay the higher rate. Uh, so that as far as the technical assistance, we're going we're going to do the best we can to meet that seventy five percent. But if something happens, uh, you just go ahead and do the work, and we don't revise the agreement, then 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 you're on the hook for that that overage. So. It, it, it takes it, it, it we we can make it happen pretty fast. It takes a few days to revise the agreement. Um, uh, usually, somebody on a select board has signatory signatory authority to approve that uh, on a uh, moment's notice, and um, uh, we, usually we can make that happen pretty quick. And and, and that happens all the time. Usually, usually we're very conservative with our estimates and their. Uh, but every once in a while, uh, one goes over. I mean, contractors are straight out; and they're they're not looking for work. So uh, to the old rule of supply and demand, that that happens. So, thank you, Bob. Any other questions for Bob? Board yeah, members? yeah, I'm sorry, Steve. Bob, you answered my question. Okay. I, I just have one other question, Bob. Uh, there is reference to a ninety percent for limited resource areas. Can you talk about what the limited resource area is? Well, uh, in a, in a nutshell, the uh, there are no limited resource areas uh, in Vermont, so that kind of that throws that it out. Answers, there. That, 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 right yeah, that answers it plenty enough for now, me. Now, right. well, and I, I I hate to mention this, um, you know, during Irene, the damage was uh, so severe that they were able to bump everything up to a ninety percent. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen with this this event. Uh, they're still calculating the numbers, so uh, I guess it's a remote possibility that might happen. Uh, we'll, we'll, all I can do is say uh, we'll wait and see, but uh, all I can do now is just promise that uh, we'll cover 75%. If we get 90%, um, that, that'll be a little bit gravy. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Liz has moved to I'll approve the letter. Is there a second? Bridget. Bridget, okay. Um, any further discussion? This letter doesn't need to go into you know a plan as far as you know requiring us. This gets us in that. This is just this is just the application piece, so I'm clear. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes. Yeah. Um, and this is a you got a copy of this in your email, I believe. I did. Yeah, we all did. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, you know, I don't know why we wouldn't do this. Whether we go all the way with this, we've got to see how it goes and see how we're doing. But. Yeah, I'm I'm comfortable with the with the financial risk, I guess. Okay. And so, uh, and I'll get with Eric and think about getting that McCullough Hill address on the list. Okay. And so we've, got, all we've in, got two more months to add to it. So I'm okay. sorry, go ahead. So the motion's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Uh, yeah. Aye. Any opposed? Renew you in favor or opposed? Well, I, You're uh, in favor. Okay. So I'm signing the letter. I'm going to give them the letter to you. Um, yes, you can hand it to me and I'll get it faxed in and scanned over to Mike and Bob. Thank you for taking the time. And you'll get a uh, a copy of it too. I promise. <laughs> I, might, I might just uh, reply all, not everybody. Oh, no, that's fine. Okay, thanks. There you go. Thank you. Well, and and again, we're we're here to help you through the process. If 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 you have any questions, don't hesitate. Um, Mike is really good at at, at this program. Um, you know, don't don't hesitate to reach out. There's no such thing as a stupid question. There's no such thing as too many questions. So don't don't hesitate to give us a call. Okay, Bob. Thank, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I'm, I'm going to leave the meeting now. So uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Take, you. take care. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna, I'm going to suggest that we just yeah. skip over the agenda yeah. into the buyouts, maybe the listers thing, so that uh, oh, so, because okay. instead of starting this conversation with the highway department, yeah. we're going to go into these other meetings. That's just a suggestion. You can do what you want. Yeah. And then we'd skip to. Well, we need to, to we need to skip to the point of civil please. authority oh, back in twelve point. minutes. So. Right. Yeah, okay. okay. But do we have members of the board of civil authority here? No. 
Yeah, but they have to be. Yeah, they're they're supposed they were going to be here at six o'clock. What I'm saying is, can we skip down to the agenda to handle the other other parts of the select board agenda? So that we can oh, all right, yes, okay, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I agree with that. So let's let's uh, let's defer. Uh, if Shelly's there, she could do the. Um, we can talk about. I know she's on. She's coming on video now. Yes. Yeah. I am here. So this is the errors and omissions we're talking about. Okay. Are you are you ready to uh, discuss that? Ready to go? Sure. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna skip down to you on the agenda just so we don't get in the middle of the highway stuff before we have to adjourn for a board of civil authority meetings. Okay. So. Is, is that not in there? Not yet. Um, you're talking about the errors and emissions, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, what happened is when Annette and I first came on, um, it looked like when there was a subdivision on Bold Lake Holdens, um, when you do the change onto the grand list, which we were not aware of, it did not cross over to the camera system. So it was changed in one place and not on another, but on the property taxes, it appears correct, but it is not. So um, I worked with our DA last week to, to make it correct. Um, and that's why you see the errors and emissions. So 20 acres were sold and subdivided and they were still, it was still on their property taxes, like in the background um, on one of the systems. It didn't just cross over automatically, which we were not aware of. And that's why so the that change. What happens, to, what happens to taxing those 20 acres? That disappears until next year? Um, no. Um, what it did is that we printed out two new, two new bills and sent them on. Oh, you so did? I, okay. I think what's happening, what it looks like is the one for the 20 acres uh, got taxed. And then the one that sold the 20 acres out of 68 also got taxed. Now, the property tax bill, it, it appears that it's not that, but it is. So okay. um, when so I when I get not, back when I get back not, I'm like, going to by, by accept by accepting this we're not giving up any town money work the tax money no is no the same. no 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 I mean I think the ones that had the 68 acres will pay a little bit less I mean not a lot but it's still they should pay you know, less if they don't have the acreage yep okay and there's another one I think that Sarah just sent me a text message when I was in route today and I'll I'll take it up when I get back. It's something similar. So I'm, I'm concerned that with the transition of listers, uh, we were not aware that there's another field that doesn't populate automatically. You have to go and manually change it. So we're gonna okay. make sure that all others are correct when, when I get back. Okay, any questions, board members? Is there a motion to approve? I make the motion that we approve. Okay. And is there a second? Thank you, Randy. Um, okay, all in favor of uh, accepting the listers' recommendation to uh, correct the Baldock Holdings tax bill appropriately per the per the description. Yeah, for, or you're saying yes? I'm I. Okay, I'm just getting. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Shelly. Thanks, Shelly. How about first set of buyouts, Sarah? Okay, you ready? Yeah. We're right. ready. So I'm going to read through the list of buyouts. But these are our applications to go forward. Very, but it's very similar model to what you're doing, what you did tonight with the river situated in the US. You're basically, uh, FEMA is very well aware of all these properties. I've sent them all the listed cards, I've seen applications. These are the applications from homeowners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read them into the record. And if you approve that going forward, you're just going forward. You're not going to commit the town. Does that make sense? So you just repeat the last sentence. You're, you're not, not what? forward. You're We're not committing the town. You're not committing gotcha. the town can pull out. FEMA, FEMA's not said the Vermont Emergency Management, which administers the program, has not said whether or not these guys are actually going to get by us. But they can't start investigating whether or not they're eligible for violence until they get these applications. Okay, so here again, here again is the uh, is the issue, right? Based on our based on our past experience with these buyouts, are there are there 
organizations in the background that are going to help us with our share of this, or are we on the hook, likely to be on the hook for the whole amount? We're certainly not going to be on the hook for the whole amount. I mean, I would, as a select board. No, 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 not the whole amount, but the uh, the 25%. Yeah. Uh, so far in our buyout history, we have never put a dime into buyouts. Yeah. Um, never had a list. We never had a list either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of these people are applying because they want to see how much money they're going to get from the federal government. They just want to see what it is. So a lot of them are not going to stick. And it is a huge procedural. I mean, I'm so far behind my town clerk work, mostly because of this and all the yeah. other stuff that it's just it's huge. But I don't know. This is the board's decision. You can say no to these, or else you can say yes. So well, by by accepting the applications tonight, we're saying we're not agreeing that we will definitely do this, right? Or well, we? you're saying, well, you know, like we could have just pulled out of the 28 Rich Road uh, deal. A week before, right? Have to go through it. Right. It's the administrative version that we're accepting to to take time away from <laughs> you or whoever is going to be dealing with that. What you're what you're saying with these is, is that you're going to have a signatory. Is that you 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 one of the pages is we agree we understand that if we we agree to this and we go forward with this that that property will never be able to be taxed. That's one of the basic bottom lines. Yeah, we understand that. Right, so that's, I mean, part of these applications, the purpose is for the homeowners to know what they're gonna go through and also for the town to know what it's gonna go through. You're gonna, if all these buyouts go through, those properties go off the tax rates. Right, right. and our taxes go up. Yeah. I, I will also add that um, Capstone has submitted a grant um, to provide um, up to eight statewide case managers for disaster um, recovery. And those case managers actually sort of take over the job that you're doing, holding the hands of the people. So they take on these people as a part of their case to help them through that process. Well, let me just tell you that once we go through this, that's almost done. So there are some things they'll have to come up with. They'll have to say, you know, whether or not they, they have to account for what kind of fund money they've already received from the FEMA so far. Right. That's also in part of these applications. But maybe FEMA might go back and say, well, what did you get for profitables for my read? I don't know. I mean, that's what happened with the 28 road case. But after this, it's the town that handles this, i.e. me. So, I mean, that's a huge burden. But I don't see what else to do when you have people who live in houses that are destined to be taken out. I mean, these are, el right. all of them are elderly. Not all, but some are elderly. And they are, so they don't have many choices. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, I think we've got this. I mean, our, our residents are in, in dire straits and we I mean, can go forward. It, 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 if it turns out that I mean, the state of Vermont is, and, and until this flood, the state of Vermont has been flush with cash when it comes to this program. They're the ones who are donating this 25% or giving the 25% for Rich Road. But the, um, I, I do think that the board, you know, can say and put in the minutes that it depends on where that 25% match comes. If that 25% match isn't going to be around, then we can't do this. The town can't absorb that kind of cost. We're already losing money, you know? Yeah, the homeowner will be responsible for the twenty five percent. Um, technically, the homeowner would be. Responsible for the so far, the the mm -hmm. yeah, not. I mean, what we've gone through so far is there's no obligation in these papers that says that the homeowner or that the town is responsible for the twenty five percent. It's just that uh, the federal government is only going to pay seventy five percent. Mm -hmm. But we have there is no financial agreement. All you're signing here is you're just saying um, that you are going to that you agree that to participate in this pro to go forward in this program, but also that the um, that you're going to lose that you're going to lose this money. You must, must put an easement on it, and that it will and that it will never ever be able to be developed. So these are not binding contracts. I mean, we're we're kind of there's no binding contract. Yeah. But I mean, they are, they do start the process. Yeah. But it's very no, similar, it's very similar to what we've just learned with, you know, with this program. It's the same thing. You put in the applications, FEMA decides, FEMA may say, 
all of these, half of these, we don't know. And then they start generating more serious paper. Well, it'll be interesting to say, but once once again, no matter what happens, not all the people are going to want to go ahead. When they see when they see what the money is, they're going to say, "How am I going to live anywhere else for that amount of money?" You know, the same thing we've heard yeah. heard in the past. So I I would find it hard to believe that they would all all go yeah. forward. But anyway, I think we need to I think we need to uh, go ahead with this with this step. Well, they can't. I mean, if you say no, it stops. Right. Even doesn't no, right. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say no to our residents on this, especially if they've done the work to get that application together. So, so mm -hmm. we'll, 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 well, I think she needs to read them aloud to the. Oh, okay. Yeah, just in case. So, so far we have uh, Cindy Carlson, 144 Three Mile Bridge Road. Uh, we have Adam and Ra Rhonda Cook. Uh, they are at. They're all on Three Mile Bridge Road, right down the street. 176 Three Mile Bridge Road. We have the Fenton's 70 Three Mile Bridge Road. We have, this is interesting, Karen, Jeanette, and Carol Maloney all over on the other side of Putnamville um, for 175 Vermont through 12. We have Dina and Gregory Hallett at 123 Three Mile Bridge Road. We have Jean and Nancy Kennedy at 42 Cross Road. Um, we have L and L Investments at 140 Three Mile Bridge Road. We have the Collins at 138 Three Mile Bridge Road. We have the Ryan's at 148 Three Mile Bridge Road. We have the Swans at 735. One sixty-eight Three Mile Bridge Road. We have the woods at 128 Three Miles Bridge Road. That's it, quite a bit. And is there a deadline for them to submit that? There is, right? It's, so far, it's very squishy, but um, they say the state of Vermont saying maybe it, they're going to cut, cut them off next summer. Oh, okay. So there's still time for. But I mean, the idea is that for Middlesex itself is in a good place because we've gone through all this vetting. You know, to do 128 Bridge Road, we had to do. Submit so they were in were in their system. So we've already we've got the Dunn's number and the cage code, and, you know, all sorts of stuff. We are we're primed. Yeah. And they know they know the state knows about this road. Right. Yeah, and we're all, all but two on three month road. Right. It's six o'clock. I move that we um, accept those applications. And how does can you designate a signatory? Uh, and designate Peter to sign okay. or you. Okay. What, I think it would be better for the select board chair. So okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. The, and designate Peter to sign. Yeah. Peter, you moved. Okay. For a second. Brandy, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we are going to uh, recess uh, the select board meeting. It's two minutes after six. And we need to start the board of civil authority meeting. Okay. I guess that's me. Thank you. Okay. Is there a. Um, here, I have a okay. And my my deepest apologies to the Yeah. Yeah. It's a I know there is a two year board. I'll be back to nice Friday morning. Well, I think it's very sad. Very, very crazy. I have to do the dry house. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, we call this meeting in order at 603 for the Board of Civil Authority. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, biennial review of the Middlesex chest list. Uh, Checklist. Biennial review of the town checklist for 17 BSA 
Statute 2150C, designating voters to be sent challenge letters, authorizing the town clerk to purge voters who missed at least two general elections and who have not responded to the previous challenge letters, action likely. Okay, the list. So okay. you guys, um, you, you probably didn't print out your checklist. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. you want mine? Yeah. Okay. I'll share it with I you. I printed it out. Are you, well, you guys, this is a lot of paper. I have one. I don't have that much paper in my printer. If I had a printer. Uh, okay. Well, let's. I can go through. I've I've already done a preliminary check for everything. If you guys just want to go through, all right. I'm yeah. gonna. Why don't I just read off the ones that I think there are some that have already been challenged that we need to boot off the list, and then there are others that we need to uh, challenge. Do you want me to go through? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you can stop me if you think that these people are still around. Who cares? Uh, Marion Allen of 187 Vermont Route 12. You don't know her? No. Okay. It's okay. I'll just look. Karen, you can sit next to me. Um, Alexander Arthur's 161 Shady Grove. That's a that's a condo that's sold many times, and I don't think they've been around. What I did is I looked for people who voted before, who had last voted before 2020, but there are some who actually have who last voted like 2012, but they just registered recently here. So that's kind of screwed up. Okay, the other one is just stop me. Sarah Austin. I'm just gonna read through it. Elizabeth Balaconis. I'm going to send a challenge letter with your approval to Jimmy Bernard of 161 Shady Rail Road. Same thing. Uh, Susan Bean is long gone. That house is 580 Shady Rail Road. She may be dead. That is, she's on my challenge list. That, that's been a property by foreclosure. I don't have any records for her whatsoever. Chris Blackburn of 23 Leland Farm Road. I think he's moved. I think he's moved too. Okay. I'm going to send him a challenge letter. Charlotte Bowden, I think she's a student who's gone on to better things. Ethan Bowden is divorced and they have moved, he has moved to Washington, D.C. And I don't, Ava Bowden last voted in 2020, but she, but all my mail to her has returned. So I can either challenge her or remove her. What do you want to do? Remove her. I would remove her. Okay. Earl Bombard, 598 Chiro Road. I, 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 He's on my challenge list. He hasn't responded, so I think he's gone. Here's an interesting one. George and Tanya Brett. Um, they certainly live in town. They haven't voted since 2018, 2016. Um, you know if they've moved? They live. They, they live there. They okay, live so there. don't challenge them. Don't right? challenge them. Okay. Nancy and, oh yeah, they, they also live there. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, Amanda Burnham, 611 Center Road. Oh, she's fine. So that's an example of somebody who voted someplace else and registered in. Um, Pamela Bird, 73, Molly Supel. I don't even, uh, does anybody know her? No. Okay, she needs a challenge letter then. Timothy Kane, 908 US 32. That's an apartment building. We get a lot of them through here. Um, Car Mariah Carlson Kerrigan, um, she's already been challenged. She's gonna, I'm gonna yank her with her permission. Kelly Carroll at Four South Bearsmont Road. Does anybody know Four South Bearsmont? So she lives with. Um, You're taking the Mary Peacard, one of the Picards. As Kelly far as I know, she's there. Okay, then I won't challenge her. Thank you. Um, good. Carrie Champagne, Champagne, 1325 Shady Rill. I mean, she's Shirley, she's Shirley's, but I don't know if Carrie is a male or a female. Um, let's see. Does anyone know Philip Dalsmer at 36 Three Mile Bridge Road? Andrew Danu, he's, he's at, I know he's gone on to better things. I'm going to challenge him a letter. I'm going to challenge him. Uh, Crystal Davy at 155 Davy Road. Stop me if you've heard any of these. Joellen Demers and Randall Demers. They, you know, they used to own the, the metal mark. Uh, um, Jeffrey Duplessis, completely different person, literally a completely different person, moved to California. <laughs> different gender, different person, different everything. No, he moved to Hawaii. Who is that? Um, Mary Emerson, 406 US Route 2. Ring a bell with anybody? Okay. Um, Sean Everhart, 27 Wood Road. Nope. Okay. Um, Allie Freeman of uh, McCullough Hill Road. 
She's doesn't live there anymore, right? Oh, what's okay. her last name? Yeah, Freeman. Pat, 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 Pat's there. This is his daughter. Yeah. California. Yeah. She's in California. Yeah. She married a guy from Britain. I did not swear there. Uh, she went over there. She went went to Britain. I don't want to. Uh, she went overseas and made it loath to take her off the checklist. Um, but uh, maybe I'll send her a challenge letter <laughs> because of that. Uh, Linda Gamble of 92 Gilnet Road. She's been on my challenge list. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna yank her. Renee Garand, for Garand Hill. Anybody know? Uh, I would venture to guess she's not. I okay. think she lives in Boston. Yeah. She's oh, really? Yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. Uh, Wade Great, 594 Vermont Route 12. Nope. Uh, Lynn Gregory, five six five seventy five East Hill Road. That's your neck of the woods, Peter. You know, Lynn Gregory. I have no idea. I mean, I mean, uh, had sick is gone. She's moved out of state. And she's already found Amy Harris of one one four East Hill Road. Anybody got a clue there? She moved. She, she lives did. in uh, Oregon. Yeah, they're in Oregon. Oregon. Wow. Okay, yeah, they've been there for a long time. Yeah, she has been there. She's been on my challenge list. I don't know why. Scott Harvey, 103 U.S. Route 2. 103 for U.S. Route 2. Nope. Um, as of a few months ago, he's asked for money for the, um, well, I, I, I think he's still there. It's okay. an apartment. Okay, great. Yeah. Perfect. That's wonderful. Emma Hawk, Oak Hawk. Do you know what happened to them? Was those Hawk? You know Emma those guys? Hawk. No. That's your. I think they're gone. It breaks away. Uh, John Haynes, 209 Brook Road. I don't know who that is, but I'm going to send him a challenge letter. They, they live in the big house. That's the Hain? Yeah. Okay, so I don't send a the challenge garden letter. Right down the road. Great. Thank you very much. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, we've got Emma Hempstead of 307 Culver Hill Road. That's your neck of the woods. Sound familiar? Emma Hempstead, she probably lived, that looks like it might be Sarah Seedman's rental. Ah, good idea. I think okay, that's probably what it is. She could be something pounds later. She's probably not there anymore. Okay. Sierra Henderson, 116 Edon Road. Nope. Uh, Sierra's like Eric's age, and so she's probably, she's not there, there anymore yet. She's gone. Uh, Michael Hoffman of 822 Center Road. I think his wife, Trisha, no, they have a different address. Michael Hoffman. Mm -hmm. Michael Hoffman. Mm -hmm. Center Road. Oh, no. Yeah, the different got different address. Just well, she's on the top there. Um, I'll go to Siri Hoffman, eight two two Center Road. I'm trying to think, what's at eight two two Center Road? But, you know, oh, you know, who must know Center Road? Right now? <laughs> I got an idea. I know what I know what house is probably closer. Okay, William Holmes. That's Wayne Holmes' uh, son. He's been long gone from there, so he's going to check. Um, Maha Jerkowitz of 18 North Norton Road. Anybody know her? Um, all right. Uh, Dave Coons, I'm going to send him a challenge letter. He's married and elsewhere. Uh, so, so both those boys are in the military. Yep, I know. So, do we challenge them if they're in the military just because uh, they haven't voted? Uh, I well, that's a good question. I mean, Dave, they. Dave Coons got voted in, 19, in 2020, Catherine in 2022, but Kenneth in 2016, and Kenneth has had a, a, a challenge letter sent to him. So um, he got married and he moved to a different state. He moved to a different state. Yeah, yeah. he's got kids. Not kids. I know what you're no. talking about. You gotta be careful with the military, but they both live out of state. Catherine lives in Washington, D.C., and Dave, I don't know where Dave lives. He's in Albuquerque, I believe. But, but I, I think it's worth sending both those guys challenge letters. Okay. Yeah. But okay. I think, yeah, I, think that's, I think that's fine. But I mean, we should be cognizant that they're in the Absolutely. military as well. Absolutely. You have to be very, very careful with that. Alexa Krasinski, 84 Simpli Simplicity Acres. I think she's. She finally moved out. She just got married in Texas and Texas and stuff like that. Um, Mackenzie Lattimore, 2010, 210 Wood Road. She's on my challenge list. No one knows who she is. Yeah, no, I've seen that here. Taylor Lawson of three thirty two PR two. I don't even know where that is. Here's one. Frank Leferbo of Leferbo. No, yeah, he's around. Four ninety. He's still around. All right, Leferbo. Yeah, I see. Him. Okay. Yeah, yeah Frankie's here. Okay. Um, let's see who else we got here. Ah, yes, legitimate. Isn't he your next door neighbor? No, he lives in the top of Gulf Thurman Hill. He's right up the street. Oh, okay. All right. Um, the Legendras, they moved a while ago, so they're not road. I'm going to just, they're on my challenge list, so I'm going to yank them. 
Kevin Lyons, 71 Upper Sunnybrook Road. Anybody know anything? No. Uh, Carly Martin, 143 Melbridge Road. Obviously, it's under the, I'm going to send her a challenge letter because I don't think they, that's it now. Oh, she might be okay, actually. That might be the daughter. Um, uh, moving right along. Christopher Moran, 782 East Hill Road. Sound familiar? Nancy Morocco, 22 PR3. Nope. Keith Murphy, 152 Lower Sunnybrook Road. Murphy. Oh, you. Adrian Murphy's son. What did you do, Lower Sunnybrook? Oh, not Sunnybrook. There in the color, right? Jake Murray. I know Jake Murray's been on Brighter Shores, right? Yeah. I'm going to send him a challenge letter. Douglas O'Brien, 60 Upper Sunnybrook. Douglas O'Brien. Does that sound familiar? Maybe the Red House. Mr. Ribbon's old rental. Oh yeah, that transition. That 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 that's old, but that's a rental. Oh, that's voted two thousand eight. I'd send it. Yeah, yeah they're two thousand eight. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doug Andrew. Rachel O'Donnell, uh, twenty seventeen, two seventeen. Oh yeah, Ron, long, long time ago. Okay, O'Brien's. Okay, good. O'Brien. Okay. Um, Sean O'Neill, twenty nine JB Road. Zoe Olson. Come on, somebody was telling us. She's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Zoe Olson. Zoe? Yeah, yes, yes. I'd say send a message. I think she would be in New York. I think she's coming back. Okay, we'll send her a challenge letter. Sean O'Neill is Cheryl's son. Sean O'Neill is Cheryl's son. Yeah, he's on my he's on my my list. Where should should I should I boot him? I mean, he's grown up and yeah. He's not challenged him before he hasn't responded. Right, so yeah, he's probably moved away. Okay. Um, uh, Rebecca Phillips, 143 Melbridge Road. That was another address we had. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Catherine Ross, 55 East Bears. That's Larry Denver's. Uh, Jeremy Schneider. Uh, they tell the the Schneiders say that he has moved. I've sent him a challenge letter. He hasn't responded. Sarah Sims, nine zero three U.S. Route two. Ring a bell. Ben Skolnick is gone. I think he's like, gone. Yeah. Uh, Brad Spencer and Nate Smooth Spencer. I'm going to send them challenge letters unless you guys do them wandering around town. I'm not seeing them. Lori Stearns, 105 Lower Sunnybrook Road. Challenge. Lori Stearns. No, no, no. How about uh, James and Bill Tatro? Well, what is, I'm sorry, I've got James Tatro at 13 Portal Road and Jill Taylor at 15 Shirt Street. I don't think either of them is there. <laughs> challenge them. And Batch on. Long gone, right? She's gone. Yep. All right. Um, and then let's see who else we got. Oh, here's your friend, Penny Vanderbush. She's here. She's here. Yeah. Um, Nancy Bastier, 27 Three Mile Bridge Road. Yep. And I think they sold. And then we've got Fred Weingarten, who's long gone. I don't know why he's still on the list. And uh, Mark White, 83 Lower Sunnybrook Road, he's here. He just hasn't voted, right? You guys know Mark White? <laughs> but <laughs> I think he was the one who actually had to take his kids in a cut. Um, Lucille Wood, 114 East Hill. Hey, 114 East Hill. Is that no. familiar, Lucille Wood? Oh, yeah. Lucille Wood is, uh, sorry, she's also in um, out west. Okay, so her parents cool. moved. There, there's Skolnick and. Oh, there. all right, that's yeah. great. That helps a lot. Okay, Leroy Yoder, 13 Winley Drive. Oh, okay. that's it. Yeah. So all you okay. have to do is just make a motion to. Uh, Can I have one? Yeah. I don't think you just put the number. If you were a letter. Okay, send him a challenge letter. Yeah. Okie dokie. I also think, uh, can't hear Chris. Yeah, can you can speak up? We can't hear you. Oh, no, um, he said just that Lucas Midderground is a need okay. the challenge letter. Okay. Um, Chris Blacker. We already, we already hear you. Yeah. Um, 
Anderson? No. The second I think is from Chicago. I'm sorry, you're really going to speak up. Yeah, you have to stand for him. Okay, so please say. Brendan Anderson. Brendan Anderson, send him a John letter. Okay. Is everyone being silent? Yep. Okay. We're just so I was very sorry. I tried to join on Zoom, but I was not able to. Well, probably because so. I wasn't by there. The computer. Yeah, and that's why I just drove. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Paul okay. Farrell. Farrell? I think he was in me. Okay. That's Peter. Peter's kid. Yeah. Okay. All right. You have anyone you'd like to challenge? No. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not a moral grounds. Okay, great. So all we need is a motion saying that uh, to prove the, those who will be challenged. I'll give you guys a notice that I sent to the Secretary of State's office saying, you know, we challenged X number of voters or even so many voters that were challenged from the checklist who had not voted in two, at least two election cycles. To general elections. So, okay. Dorinda's going to make the motion. Thank you, Dorinda. Okay. Second. Chris is going to second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. That's Aye. Aye. It's been it's statutory okay. obligation with no. days to spare. Thank you very much. All righty. So, therefore, we now adjourn at 6 20. We go to the, the Board of Civil Authority. <laughs> right. Now we've got to go to a Board of Abatement meeting. We've got to have a, uh, we should have an organizational meeting. The listeners, uh, Shelly, are you still here? Uh, she, she's she she is. Yeah, I am still here. Okay, Shelley. So now we're going to the board of abatement. So the board of abatement is the select board, JPs, treasurer, and um, uh, town clerk team, and the listers. So, uh, my my suggestion was to have a board of abatement organizational meeting where we just pick a chair, vice chair. And also maybe select a date to hear um, a tax abatement request. So far, we've received only one formal tax abatement request. Um, but you know, once September twentieth, the first deadline passes, I mean, I'm sure I think we're anticipating that some people might come forward and ask for tax abatements. Yeah, because they were flooded out. Yeah. So all we need to do is choose a chair, vice chair, and then if you guys want to pick a date. Okay. I nominate Peter Hook to be chair. <laughs> okay. Oh, sure. All the heat goes on you, Peter. <laughs> Peter, chair. Yeah, okay. Are there, are there any other nominations? So there is no word of abatement. So who calls it? Who knows? <laughs> All right, all those in favor of Peter Hood as chair say aye. Aye. Uh, right. Opposed? Okay. Is there a call for a vice chair? Now, now it goes over to Peter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I nominate Liz Sharp. <laughs> I'll second, I second that. that. <laughs> okay, so who seconded that? Randy? Oh, uh, Chris. So Chris no, Randy. Okay, Liz Sharp is nominated to be Randy. vice chair. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Liz. Thank you. Who, who seconded that? Was it Randy? Randy. Randy. Okay. Great. Awesome. So I did at, at at your behest and with stern warning read all that abatement stuff. Yeah. But I'm I'm confused about one issue, and it's probably a very simple issue. But we can't abate the school taxes, right? It's just it says you can, but we still have to pay them. Yes. You still want to know for them, but you can't abate them. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but, the board can make a decision. You know, if we get my so the way this is going to work is that the, the homeowners have got to come and try to pitch their case, right? And they've got to give us some information like how much they got in insurance, why they why this bill should be justified to spend it to thrust it onto the neighbors, which is what you're doing, you're burdening your neighbors. So there's some people who may have some really good arguments. There's some people who are just like, I, I, I don't want to pay my taxes because my house got flooded. And then the board of abatement's got to make a decision. You know, how do you look at things? Do you just look at the house structure? Do you look at this? Do we, you know, so there are all sorts of things to consider on a case by case basis. But 
we, I, I just want to be clear about this because it's important because it's two thirds yeah. of the tax money, right? Yeah. Is the school. So we make the decision. We can say we'll abate the town taxes, but we won't abate the school tax. You can make that decision. Okay. You can now, is there the any, fees. there's no way they can go through the state and have the school taxes abated, correct? Not to my knowledge or information, but certainly this is going to be something that the legislature is going to have to address with big cities like Barry and stuff, you know, Montpelier. Right. Okay. And my question was, do they, um, do we still get the tax credit? For the, I would assume we do because we're just abating their portion of it. Still which, being paid, right? Yeah, so we would still get paid their property tax rebate to the town, but we would be just potentially you're just saying, abating the net taxes, not abating the road. It's yeah. all based off the of previous year anyway. The, the rebates, right? I know, right? But we're just they just got a net tax, but we're not going to go right. right? Yeah. Right. Net tax. Right. right. So would you guys like to pick a date to meet? Yeah. I was thinking sure. something in October or November. It'll have it be a Tuesday, like all of our nights. A Tuesday between yeah. Blackboard. I mean, November's November is pretty good for me. So I don't know if we want to do it the same night of a select board meeting. I mean, I get, I guess where it's going to depend on and we have two or three of them, that's one thing. But if also all of a sudden we have 10 of them, um, we may have to do multiple nights, but let's Let's set up one night to let's set up one night. Start the ball rolling. So in November, we do first Tuesday. That's election day. You don't want to do it on election. Well, there's nothing, day. there's no election. You have to do it on Tuesday. No, but no. it was just to no nothing. It's an off year. You never know it from the way we're all I just, I just think it's a bad precedent to do to, to do it on election day. Meeting. So the twenty, how about the, how about the twenty first? That would be our second meeting. Okay, well that's also when the fire department comes in and the budget. That's the and we'll be out into budget singer to uh, select. Yes, we'll do it. Well, that's it's all set up. Well, do we want to have a? Do we want to do it another day? Wait, why can't we do why it? Can we do it first Tuesday of November? I'm no. sorry. Why can't we do it the first Tuesday of November? The seventh. That's the seventh. That's seventh. election day. There's no election. There's no election. There's All right. Well, let's do it the seventh then. Okay. Does everybody agree? Yeah. But okay. oh, hold on. If we're scheduling this, and what if we get like three more? We'll have to schedule we another day. We can't we can do them all. One time. Or else we can just do three at one, three right. at a time. You know, this is. There's no, there's no hard and fast rule. That's why the board of abatement, the, the abatement handbook says, pay your taxes. We're done your note. It's not like the board of civil authority where you have a grievance okay. and you got to hear it within a certain time and you got to do all this stuff. So the, only, the only abatement thing that I, re, I remember us dealing with was years ago and it took quite a bit of time. I mean, it was not, I a, that too. It was not a simple it was really quick. It, was, it took a while. It's not a simple quick thing. Well, you don't have to make a decision that night. You're not even supposed to make a decision. No, but just hearing, the, just hearing that, I'm, I'm just saying, I have a memory that we spent a lot of, a lot of time on that, and that was years ago. I don't know, but That's let's, a, let's say we'll start then, and we'll see how many we get. I think it just at least we can give people who have applied now. We can say, okay, you know, give them a date. They've got to get their stuff together, and also we've got to warn it. Right. Because there are parts of it, and I've got to check this again, how much of this will be public, because people will bring in fi private financial information. On the other hand, when you're baiting somebody's taxes, that's got it. That's, that's, a, that is a big I remember it being private last time. The last time we had a board of abatement hearing was when the, um, uh, the lawyer came in to argue that Marika had not told him about the other year tax. Do you remember that? I don't remember that one. Yes. I thought you know, we like, also had the guy whose house burned down. I don't remember that. And we had a. Yeah, um, we did. There was an abatement. There was an abatement. Wasn't it the girl who owned the camp? I thought that was an abatement. That, that was an abatement. That was one of the yeah, there was, Right, but it was a girl that bought a camp. She did. It was she bought a camp? Oh, let, let's just see how it goes, guys. You can but, go. You have the right. It's a quasi. It's, it's quasi public. You can go into deliberative executive session. Yeah, but we're talking about. I think you're talking about public. Individuals' information being in the public domain. Right yeah. Now. Um, and I, I, you think I, that's all public? I, I do. Yeah, you know, right. they're, they're asking to to be relieved of a public yeah. duty. 
Right. You know, so I, I think it would be. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that when we get okay. to that. Is there a deadline by which people have to apply or submit no. for the abatement? No. So they can they can apply at a later time, in which case we'd have to convene another meeting. Yeah, so should, yeah. we should set one meeting knowing that there's a lot of unknowns. Right. And we right. might have to do a process, like you said, whether it's three or 10 or right. 50 of them. Yeah. That's so, that's why that's why I wanted to have that you know yeah. discussion. Yeah. In terms of scheduling, do we want to consider when the tax is due? No, we don't. Yeah. I mean, so if they don't pay, you know, they subject to a penalty. Yes, they, yes, they are. are. Yeah. I mean, they're paying. We're not going to abate it. Well, yeah. In the, in, the, in the handbook, the literature I give everyone, it says the first line is pay your taxes because yeah, right. okay. you you don't but know what you're going to get. Right. Okay. Just kind of pay right. Money. You're saying you can't afford to pay. Well, people, I think the, the biggest argument I'm hearing is, look, if I don't have a house to live in now, I gotta live someplace else, why should I have to tax? And that goes back to the argument that whatever you own on April 1st is what gets taxed. So now you're in a board of abatement. Well, I say we, I say, yes. Uh, no, please go ahead then. I, I was just gonna say, let's let's go for the seven yeah. and yeah. see how many yeah. we really have. And we'll we'll just take it from there. Do, do we want to publicize and have the, we have a hearing, hearing, for everyone to come in, set for the seventh, we just not publicize that and just when people apply, tell them then we're gonna have a hearing in the second. I say, I say, what we do is we tell them that our first set of hearings will be on the seventh, but we don't know when we will be hearing there. I mean, we'll give them plenty of notice, but it might be on the seventh or it might be at some later date, depending on how many we get. Well, statutorily, I can order meeting 15 days ahead. So what I'll do is I'll order meeting 15 days ahead. Of okay. If we get an application, people have been saying, you know, I need this, I need this abatement done because I have my taxes are due, and I send them information saying that's not how it works. Okay. That hasn't completed them. I've created right. so many enemies in this town, it's really fun. But if we can say we're having a hearing on G well, we'll put you on for June for November 7th, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll right. see what happens. Right. So my my thought yep. there, and you know, having being relatively new to this, you know, uh, and not doing the abatement, understanding that we're spreading the tax burden to everyone else in town, mm -hmm. um, and this might be uh, more volume than the standalone that have been in the past. Like the what what I'm going to be thinking about is exactly how much burden was spread. Like you know, whether it's per hundred thousand or per whatever. Right. Um, so I, you know, maybe a sideline conversation, but I hope we'll have the numbers and I'll, I'll volunteer a little to do some math, like if I have the raw numbers, but as people are coming in saying, you know, well, you know we'll, I have we'll no know. house, I can't pay. How many, you know, dollars per 10,000 or 100,000 is it? I feel like that's an important framework that is good to be thinking about. Like, you, you, know, know, special you know, because, you know, people literally lost their houses and we're all covering 20 bucks a head. That's one thing. If right. it's 500 bucks, that's like, you know, a different conversation. Well, it's, but, it's, but it's potentially real money. Yeah. I mean, no, if they say, you know, it's 50% of the value of my house that should be the abated amount. I'm just saying whatever it is, if we agree, um, you know, could it be a thousand dollars? Absolutely. Yeah. Could be, could be more, could be less. Yeah. Um, but as a percentage of our total taxes, it's pretty small. Yeah, like yeah, that's what I'm saying, small. diffused over everyone else that's it's gonna right. come together and help right. out. Right. In, in that right. Sense, you know? right, right, right. Well, I think we've done what you needed to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I will adjourn, adjourn with my new powers. I think we need a time for that meeting. <laughs> Too late. Okay. We need a time for that meeting. Set a date. Is it six? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Six o'clock? It's the same night as the blackboard, right? Okay, yeah. well, six o'clock. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Is Wait. the abatement of the tax or is the abatement of the valuation of the property? It's the abatement of the tax. So we're going to be talking about the property valuation. Yeah. Because we're purely talking about the tax this, this year. Yeah. But it can also be a part of it. It can yeah. be uh, right. just the town part. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. It can be fees only. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. No more, no more sub subcommittee going in. But yeah, yeah. And don't do that stuff. Like we do with previous. So that that meeting started at six eighteen, and we're done. Okay, so I am adjourning.
Board of Abatement hearing. Thank you all for your time and attention. Meeting the Board of Abatement hearing. And I am reconvening for a whole the select board meeting. Thank you. So we are. We are now back to flood recovery update, reviewing FEMA timeline for reimbursement submissions, current state of repairs and future tasks, total expenditures to date, planning, permanent repairs, and reviewing the process back when possible. Um, you want to start this off, Dorinda, about the about the money part, or how do you want to go? Well. I'm concerned about the bills and how they're rolling in. There is, and I mean, there's many parts to this. Um, the first part is, is, I think we're long past uh, emergency repairs and should be into um, regular repairs, and which would go out of the bid. Um, secondly, some of the if the invoicing that's coming in is got to go back and be readdressed. That's why I gave you some of the major bills here. I tried to sit down with just doing over on um, McCullough Hill the other day, and your very first bill with J. Merrill Construction is all you have is a bill for $28,000. It doesn't account for no breakdown. Anything it's on more than just McCullough Hill Road, so you don't know which portion was addressed to that. And this isn't, I'm not, it's consistently through several of the bills. Um, build up road with material, what material? Um, so these bills, you know, stone fill, these bills need to go back and be put on whatever Steve has deemed as special projects. Um, and I just, you know, I feel before I pay any more bills that we should have the correct billing in place before we continue to pay on these bills. Sure. I think it's not a big ask. Um, the other thing, which I don't know if it's being addressed, is a lot of these bills that who is anybody cross referencing the McCullough bills? versus what we're being billed for, for material. Um, to that effect. Yeah. You know, is it coming? So, so like- if if, What you're saying, if they're buying material from McCullough- Is it? So not only one, maybe we're probably playing a markup on it instead of being directly billed from McCullough because they charge, whether you're Mary or John, they charge at the same rate. So if you're paying a higher rate for the material for them to lug it in, um, you know, that's something that should be thought about. You know, a lot of this is already done, but also, you know, was this material built to the contractor or was it built to us? Right. So so far, I mean, from the from the bills I've seen, which are just the bills you gave us, it appears it's all built to the contractor. Well, I mean, we don't have any bills from McCullough, or do we? We have yeah. tons of them. Oh, we, we do. Tons of them. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'll That's highlight fine. so you know okay, what we're it. up against on these bills. That um, right now we're setting at the machine goes down to 1.7 or 1.73. 173 in bills. 173. Yeah. Yeah. One one million one hundred seventy three thousand six hundred seventy four dollars and eighty one cents. Yeah, and that's just what I've seen so far. That doesn't say whether they've been paid, not paid, or whatever. That's just bills that have come across my desk. Yeah. Um, the line of credit is for one point five. We've also spent all of our money that is in our reserve. Funds. So, fund balance. Huh? Fund balance. Fund balance. Everything. I mean, okay. I've had a lot of people throw out, well, we can borrow from this to pay that. Well, we just got in a hundred and seventy-six thousand dollar bill from uh Pike 
for the paving project. We only have 100,000 in the bank. Um, and I just think there's not a lot of weight being put into the fact that when we met the other day and said work has to stop, it's kind of discouraging when you see people still out there working. I, I'm not oh, I, anybody. I'm just saying that I am truly concerned. Yeah. So certainly, absolutely, we have to have correct invoices which match up with what you need, Steve. Yes. Uh, I'm going to so have to with you, Dorinda, on some of those bills. Because you're absolutely right. They they are going to need to correct the bills. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. But and I guess to be paid. And I guess uh, I mean they're gonna they're gonna squeal some of them, but you know they've got to know what we're going through with FEMA. I mean they can they can sit down in a couple of hours and break out that bill the way we need it and get it back to us. Yeah, we can't submit we can't submit a single bill to FEMA right until these are all right. corrected. Right. Um, so it's a concern. You know the other thing is we have and I'm estimating we have a school payment. But trying to hope for, we used all the money that's coming in from taxes and from everything yeah. else. I, it's going to be eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we have to pay next month. Yeah. So we're out of money. Um, and I think we need to take a serious look as to what projects go forward, what projects are going to put on hold. What we can eliminate from our budget if possible. Um, you know, town hall. We can't put any more money into that grant or anything like that. We, these are the types of projects that until we get start to get reimbursed, you know. So there's been a lot of confusion about this about this FEMA thing, but what I heard on that conference call that I participated in is if we can close out some of these projects and submit them, we can get reimbursed sooner rather than later. Yeah. Is that yeah. your understanding? See, you were on the phone. Yeah. But um, back to so I think one of the things one of the things we need to focus on is take a look at the scope of work and say, okay, which ones can we which ones can we close out? And what I was thinking about is mm -hmm. if we close them out and there's more work that needs to be done, that's going to have to be done in the normal course of work by the by our road crew. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. But somehow we got to we got to start the money coming the other way. Yeah, these all of the jobs can be closed out right now. There can be more work to be done at a later date on these roads, and we can put that out a bit. And so during uh, Dorinda's, uh, we do need to have these bills corrected, but there also may be some roads because we do, there's some roads that need attention now. We're going to have to put some of them out to bed. Maybe don't want to put all, at the, all the projects, but we're putting them on, on to, to a damage inventory for FEMA. Uh, the only good news was that any of the roads that the town has worked on, which was almost every one of them, during the emergency phase, they can now be paid for it as long as we're doing, as long as there's some other work that has to be done on that road, which there is on every one of them. So but you're kind of between a rock and a hard spot. I mean, school starts and, uh, and uh, so twice a day. Uh, you can't really be holding the road up. You got to right. stop. You're putting a culvert across, and you're putting, you know, right. You're going to have. And then, if we get snow, and some of this isn't done, like over by uh, weeds, uh, uh, South Bear Swamp, various areas, you, you're going to be in trouble. Question, Victor, can I, we get borrow more money? No, I'm not <laughs> just talking to you, said, Peter. I'm talking to the board. He said he came to the crop once. We came to the crop once, and that was where... But can we borrow from a different um, lender? I don't know. I mean, how far... I mean, I can look into that. I can... Well, what... So you said that the other day, uh, I think the last meeting, you were going to go for a million and a half, right? Right. 
and you haven't got quite to it. But it really doesn't. It doesn't matter. It the doesn't really matter, right? Because we are, we're close to expending that whole million right. and a half. And my concern is we still need money to operate. We still have to meet right. payroll. We still have to pay for repairs. From my understanding, we've got a large repair coming up. Not as big as I had as well. Well, that's good news. I found out today. <laughs> oh, oh what, could you repeat that, Eric? It's not as big as I. It was a, it was a lesser of the. Uh, of, of the thumb, so it was. It's good. Lesser of the evil. Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. But no, what I'm saying, Dorinda, is that, or is it? You know, whether you get to one and a half. Oh, I've got one and a half. I can go tomorrow and take it out of the okay. one and a half. Okay. So, but that's not the issue. That's not. You're the going issue. to be borrowing more. How much do we want to go in debt? Is that what you're saying? Not, I don't... not just how much we want to go into debt, as it is, we still have. I've used up all of our fund balance right. and, um, you know, all of our wiggle money. So, all of our wiggle money. Have. so gone. it's gone. And that's what we operate, you know, like our property taxes coming in right now. That is, you know, that's what we use to pay our school taxes. And if we're using it to pay bills, right. so, you know, we need a direction from the board as to, you know, what they want to do, you know, um, where they think they should scale back, what work is necessary to be done. Um, I mean, we're going to go out, not that it's a large sum of money, but I'm paying interest on a million and a half, and that's not reimbursable. Um, right. So these are all things that, you know, and every day there's somebody else that is kind of, I'm already getting letters from all these special groups who want their $250 in their whatever, you know, right. and they're all in the same predicament we are. So it's like, um, I, I'm just trying to give you fair warning that, you know. Got it. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so number one. Number one, and I know this is hard to do, and you guys hate doing it when I try and pin you down, but if we're at 1.173 now, right? what do we have left to do in terms of flood repairs? It's not even what's left to do, though. It's what bills, what's happened in the last couple right. of weeks that couple haven't been in. Where's that the problem? That's Probably does not have all of the bills today. Probably right. don't. No, I know that. I so, don't. I know that. But I mean, we're, do, do we have any idea, some idea of what we can expect the total to be? Or are we just right now? operating in the dark? You mean on, on the, the project? whole project, the whole thing. By the time we get to this, the end of this, what's your best estimate, guess, guesstimate of what it's going to be? I mean, we thought we thought borrowing that 1.5 was going to be enough. Well, clearly it isn't. So it depends on how much work you're going to. Some well, 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 let's put it this way: I'm not saying to get the roads perfect, okay, but to get them passable and safe for the winter. That's what I'm talking about. If there's more work to be done next year, we can work on that. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, for instance. All our plans of what our highway work plan is are off the table for the foreseeable future until we get until we get all this work behind us. So, you know, we're going to be doing work next year, which is still flood recovery work. Uh, yeah. I anticipate, um, but the roads need to be safe. I mean, drive. Imagine a school bus coming down East Hill right now on a on a snowy morning and hooking a wheel in one of those. Gigantic holes. What are those gigantic holes? It isn't going to be pretty. And there are going to be cars zipping off into those ditches and everything else. So there's a certain amount of this that is a serious safety. As you said, Victor, we got to do it before snow time, which basically means we've got 60 days if we're lucky. Maybe not that long. So what is it for us? As far as that figure goes, I mean, I I started doing some estimating on some of these roads, but from what I'm hearing, and like Dorinda doesn't have all the bills yet on this, I guess I guess what I would suggest for my we were, we wanted to start putting some of these roads out to bid, but I hold up. Well, I don't think it can hold up, but I think what you need to do is 
for us to redo what we went over as far as what we're doing on the roads and just do it so it's just safety measures on all roads. Create new just new strictly projects, right? safety right. measures. Pardon? What was Create it? a new project. Right. So close, close out, out the projects. Close out these projects, get reimbursed, and then whatever I mean, you know, we may have to do a bond for some of this work. I mean, who knows what we're gonna have to do. Do we have do we have a sense of like when we close the project out? I mean, it's still months before FEMA's gonna pay us, right? I think Jerry or somebody said that usually you're looking at 90 days, but they've seen them come through if everything's clean and zips right through that you might see it soon. What are other towns doing that have this terrible? I think they're having meetings just like what we're doing. Do we have any idea? I don't, I don't know, but there is something I need to add. Um, the paving project on Shady Rail is not done. It's not what? It's not done. One lane is not done. Right. But we've got the bill for it. That's not the whole bill. <laughs> what came in today was it the whole bill? It's no. the whole grant. I don't think it is. No, I'm trying to find it. I think that's just the statement. So oh, this is yeah. this is the statement. That's the entire grant. Right. These are the yeah, materials. I think if you look back at the bill, it says up to the, as, as of so far. Um, I thought that was the entire yeah. grant, but I'll have to go back and yeah. look at my grant file. But I will double check that because they they need to come back and finish that. We have an unmoving road. Yeah. Um, and they have ability to come back at the end of the week. I need to know if I tell them to do or don't. I got it. That include over on my plate. It's supposed to. So I mean, we're jumping all all over the place. But but I'm just, I have a question. I have a question about that little section. You know, since it's been converted to a gravel road, I think it's fine. Why do we even want to pave that little stretch of road, especially if we don't have the money? Well, I think the the state gave us a grant to pay for the road, not to leave well, I, th I thought that I thought that little section was on us. Was that included in the no, payment? That was added on. I thought it was on us. It is. It was added on. Uh, yeah. It was added on. Yeah. Oh, all right. Then we so, have to do it. Yeah. You know, it's, uh... Are you talking about the East Hill Park? Correct. Yes. The <laughs> How much was so they increased that okay, state guys. grant to... Give me some kind of a number. Uh, you Somehow you got what, five million? some idea in your head what the what the number is. Two point seven five million. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to borrow another basically one point five million. Right. Point two five. Well, I know, but oh, I'm, on the I'm on the safe side. I'm on the safe side and yeah. say let's double it. When you mentioned closing out the project, what's the title of the new work? Is it Didn't still work. flood? So related. It's yeah. So the way the way it works is that we have several roads listed as emergency in the in the corridor, and those are the roads that everybody went to and fixed right away because the yeah. middle section was cracked. Yeah. Then some of those same roads, in fact, FEMA wants to see this. Some of those same roads we go back, and those are permanent construction. So because FEMA doesn't want to say, oh, you did a million dollars worth of work on bid on non bid work. So we have to go back and do that. I understand. So that's part of the issue. But I think Jerry just stopped, and Jerry Bishop, our FEMA designate, designate stopped by just this morning and talked to Steve and me about getting the emergency roads classified. And also the the other part, I just I don't know if you guys know this, but if, they, if it's an emergency road and you're not going to go back to that emergency road, the road crew can only be, the road crew's time can only be compensated if it's over. If you're working on a road that will then be part of the permit re rebuild with an eye toward hazard mitigation, because FEMA doesn't want to keep giving us money that we're just going to, you know, put in two small culverts or something, then the road crew's time can be reimbursed if for its daily work. On it. it's, it's almost fast accurate. You think that they would do it the other stuff, but that's that. So, and also, I have to write a narrative. Um, at the board, I was going to bring it tonight, but I just ran out of time. By next week, I hope to have a narrative explaining, you know, what, what what conditions, why conditions were so bad in Middlesex that we had to rush out and hire a bunch of contractors to do it this way, as opposed to saying 
at pro day should be how much will it cost to fix that? So anything I can, anything, any photos that anybody has from the day after yeah, the flood, so from yeah. bad, oh, I've got those, those, those like lower center, center road, just send them on in. And we're gonna send that in with our proposal and upload that to Jerry once you guys agree with the next meeting. We're gonna upload that to FEMA and that's gonna be our pitch to FEMA about why we had to do it with that number. So so if I go out and take out the whole line of granite, I can kind of bring us back to normal, back to where we were pre-flood. Okay. Yeah. And then we can start spending that money again. But what we need to be conscious of is the school payment, the fire truck that we committed to, um, and our regular operating costs. Right. So you know, that's kind of why I'm just trying to really drive it. No, I got it. Unless the work is really necessary, we need to pick and choose. Well, I think what we're I think what we're thinking of doing is saying only safety related, get the roads in shape that they're safe for the winter work. And I don't know how much how much work is that boy? <laughs> I know you. I know you hate when they do this. But we've got to raise well, the money somehow. So I, I don't know. It, I'm not going to go figure it out. I, know. I mean, there's a lot of safety work. I mean, I'll go around again with with. I went with Eric and Vic, and we went around on stuff that needs to happen to recover from the flood. But there's a lot of that work that can be. We just let it go and just do the safety stuff like filling right. all those holes. Peter. Go ahead. So one of the things that uh, when we were going around, it wasn't so much that it was a safety issue. A lot of it is things that have to be addressed for the next time we get five inches, six inches of rain for really big problems. We got that picture, but but somehow I believe me, I understand that, and we don't want to. You know, the, the balancing act is we do this, I'm not going to call it temporary work, but partial work to make the roads safe for the for the wintertime, right? Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean they're safe for the next six inch rainstorm. They're not. There's a lot of the damage is going to recur. And I, I can tell you, and I drive around town too, not, not up and down every road, but there's been a lot of sluicing and washing since the flood. Some of those storms mm -hmm. we've had uh, mm -hmm. we've some had since the, the flood. Too. But to 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 cut to the chase here, I think we need to figure out how to borrow some more money. I, I don't think there's any question about that. And is the money another another 1.5? Have we signed the loan document yet? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so the question is, I mean, is it is it the bank's rule that they only want us to come once? No, that's what this their line of credit. That's why she said that one, like if you paid down on the loan, you couldn't go back. It's a line of credit that when it's gone, it's gone. And but I'm wondering if we can increase, increase the line of credit. So, I was just going to say, if we haven't withdrawn any loan yeah. off of it yet, I don't would know. they increase? I can call them tomorrow. If I were the bank, I would want to increase it by another $1.5 million. Well, right? I don't know. I mean, do you really think we need, that would be $3 million. Do you really but you think don't have to take it off? You don't have to take it off to say it out. No, I think it's safer that way. The but other thing is, you do you want to put ARPA money? Do you want to save the three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars that you have? I mean, I've used it because, but do right. you want to now designate it for this purpose? I think no. I think not right now. Unless right. we have to run out of money. I think the first the first step is to go back to the bank and say, if it's if it's one bite of the apple for the line of credit. Then we want a uh, one year term loan, not a line of credit. We want a loan. Advance. You can't. Well, one year, you could. You can do a one year term loan. Well, or two, year, two years or, or whatever no, it is. You can't do uh, anything more than one year without voter approval. Okay, I think but maybe, could... we're, right, let me just finish. I mean, you know, it may be that we have to have a special town meeting and get voter approval for some of this. What, what I don't want to do is get to the point where the school is calling up and saying, where's the damn money? The contractors are calling up and saying, where's the damn money? And we have to start telling them we don't have the money. That That is not a good way to operate, right? So 
you know, we need to do as expeditiously as we can, whatever we need to do to have that money available. And if, if the magic number appears to be creeping up to 3 million, I say we get another 1.5 million. And if we don't need to spend it, we don't spend it. And yeah, the other thing we have to think about in all of this, which Dorinda keeps reminding me, she's absolutely right, is we're responsible for 25% of this money we're spending. Where, right. Where's that money going to come from? Right. So I'm hoping to stay. Yeah. So we're going to have something. Just raise your hand. Okay. I'm sorry. But can't we just cancel that out? Can't you just close it? You haven't borrowed any of the money. I don't. I don't. And know. then you resubmit. I'll, I'll ask both of you. Yeah. I mean, these are all what they've done is they've incurred costs drawing up legal documents and all of that. So, you know, I can go back and find out. What our options are. I'm not going to close out anything. No, 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 no. Get the other one lined up and approved. Yeah, I'll find out that we can add on or if we can, but you know, I'm I'm about ready to go borrow on this when I saw Haven Bill come in and everything. Um well, so I, 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 that's the other thing that grant that for the payment, if it's not complete, we can't submit it. So and then we don't get it. And then we don't get it. So then we have, so now we're sitting with a 200, how much was that? 200, or something. $245,000 bills to tighten right now. Oh, that's what that extra. So, yes, sorry. I'm just going to throw out one thing here that doesn't really matter because I think you guys are doing the right thing, but there is the hazard mitigation. There is a different pool of money. Yeah. So that is something that we can get. We had this guy, Tom, here, and all he wants to know is if you're going to go back, you're going to rebuild the roads, you're going to make them better. It's a build back better grant. It's hazard mitigation. It's all there. So, I mean, there's a good chance we'll be compensated. It's not FEMA's going to handle yeah. this stuff. There's a whole other basket of money. Right. No, no, no. I understand that. And there are also, yeah. also uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk, and, and Bob mentioned it tonight, that these, that these I, I keep thinking on this co-pays, but the 25% match you know, might all of a sudden turn into a 10% match. Well, that's a little difference that makes all the difference. But my point is, my point is, we need to do the best we can do in a responsible manner that we can to make sure that we'll be able to meet our financial obligations. And I think the answer is somehow, whatever it is, we need to raise money. And if it's a matter of, heaven forbid, a you know, special town meeting, bond, I mean, whatever it is, we just have to do it. And we should be doing it now, not, not doing it when the money's due, because whatever it is, it's going to take some time. Well, and I don't mind, Dorinda, I'm happy to go with you and meet with a bank if they want to meet with us or, you know, whatever they want, we'll do it. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think that's where the sticking point is. It's, you know, it's whether they are open to it or not open to right. it or what our options are. Right. It's not who right. shows up to. No, 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 I understand. Right. But if but they, could, you know, sometimes they like to look you in the eye, in my experience. But whatever. I mean, it isn't like. It isn't like we're asking the bond, the bank to go on the hook for money that we don't expect and plan to get reimbursed for. It's a cash flow timing issue. And that generally is the kind of risk that banks are willing to take. But, you know, there, there are, uh, I don't know how many of you watch the, watch the nightly news. I tend to watch it every night. Well, now FEMA's out of money. So okay. what is that, what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of us getting our money? Who the hell knows? Biden's Biden's going for another what is it six billion or trillion? I mean, those when I get into those numbers, my my eyes glaze over, but it's a huge number. I'm just going to say something positive here. Okay, the two positive things are Jerry today says that we are further ahead than any other town in getting toward compensation. So, so that is good. The second thing is that this storm has been upgraded in FEMA's world from a category three to a category two, which is Hurricane Katrina level. That's how serious and bad it was. The FEMA guys who were here had no idea of how bad it was. They're they're overwhelmed too. But that also means there's a better chance that we'll have it won't be a 25 percent match. That will be less than that. It's more of a cash flow. It's carrying everything until right. we get the money. It's right. not a matter of spending the money. Right. It's a matter of caring. Right. Right. And that's the whole thing. And like I said, I'm not concerned, and I will talk to the bank tomorrow. Um, 
And I can get us back if I've gone this far with what's happened with the money that I've stolen yeah. from Peter and Paul, <laughs> you know, that, you know, I can get us to that point again. Right. It's a matter of after that, like I have those big obligations. So, I mean, I can ask a question. Yeah. yeah. If there are contractors who are overcharging you know, during a time of an emergency, which is legal, um, do we, we may not use them in the future, but is the board willing to come down on these guys at all and say, send the bills back and say, no, no, if this piece of equipment costs, costs X to run, do not charge the town in which you live, by the way, this much more. Is the board willing to do something like that? Do you have, it? I mean, I, I think that there's at some point, do you guys have to make a decision about that? As a taxpayer, both for federal taxes, for FEMA, and for local, I would like an answer on it. it. Sounds like we need to itemize bills first. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe we should do that. I don't have a sense. I don't have a sense. And the, the only detailed bills that I've looked at are the detailed bills that are in the hand that I have tonight, which aren't, aren't all the bills. Yeah, but it's the ones that are left are ones that are... They have McCullough bills that definitely say how many yards, what pit it came out of, and what the cost was. I got it. And but I'm just saying what, what I don't have a sense of is to what extent we're paying some kind of pre premium charge because it's emergency work and because we didn't have the opportunity to put it out to bid. And you know, I don't have a sense of what that is. And I, I hope you guys do. Now I, I don't mind being part of some push back to some of these characters, but if they're taking advantage of us at a bad time. And you you can you don't have to stop right there. I mean you there's a lot of circumstances that you would say would be prudent um, that a prudent person wouldn't have done, but what are you gonna do? Uh pick the right I understand person. I'm not, I'm not okay, go ahead. Um it's like if you have got a piece of equipment that they're charging you three hundred bucks a day, an hour for, and it's uh, it, and it's running, uh, it's dependent on how many trucks you have. You can say, "Well, get more trucks," but in today's in today's society, where there's not that many trucks out there, so, so what do you want to do? Stop work completely? I mean, I that it. that was. I get all those. Yeah. I get all those issues. Okay. Okay. We were desperate to hire people. We had roads that were closed. You know, I get all that. But the question is, did they truly gouge us or not, in your opinion? If they charged us, if these if these bills are fair and those rates are reasonable, then they are what they are. But if they're charging 25% more because they know they had us over a barrel and didn't go out to bid, then I push back. Right, and I agree with you. And and but I would say to what I said, yes, we had to have it done. So in this case that I just gave you with trucks, we paid a premium because we wanted to get as much done as we had. Now, for the person that the going rate is for something, uh, you know, I won't. I don't want to really single anybody out here tonight. But that the going rate's like 120 bucks an hour, and the guy's charging 250. Yeah. Maybe that's not okay. Yeah. Okay, well, that's what I'm talking about. That that happened. I mean, if 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 you know, we had to pay a premium to get the trucks that we desperately needed, or we had to pay a premium for a piece of equipment because they were going to give it to somebody else if we didn't pay it. Then there you go. That's the we had to do that. I agree with that. And I don't know all of the counter arguments. You know, I mean, I I can you know I can see it in my own mind, but then. You know, people tell you, you know, it's like, what do you want me to do? I don't have, you can't get a truck. We don't have any trucks. Right? Mm -hmm. No, I get, I get, I get all that. All I'm, all I'm asking you to do is when we get these reconfigured bills, just look them over and be able to say, you know what? We did pay maybe 10% more than we would have paid if we'd gone out to bid or 15% more or whatever the number is. Can you get the bills to go? Yeah. No, I, I don't know. We can take those bills when we got them. Yeah, that's all I'm suggesting. Okay, well, if it isn't worth, if it isn't worth doing, it isn't worth doing. But I think we owe it to the taxpayers, like Sarah said. I agree. To uh, to make sure we're not and and believe me, as I always say in my business dealings, 
I have a memory like an elephant. If a, if a couple of these characters have really, excuse me, screwed us, they'll never work for the town as long as I'm here. I'll tell you that, they're done. They tend to, sometimes when I deal with it, I tend to be a little chicken. If you push back a little bit, you'll get a little something off. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I do have copies, I think, of all of those. Right they're all right in this blood binder. You can come in and look at it any day of the week. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't think it should be just one person. I think it should be Eric and yeah, yeah. it should be it should be the yeah. three of you to, to start with because you're the guys who have the best idea of what the yeah. Yeah. I mean I can look at those bills and I don't know if they're fair or not. But, How are you doing on your timing, Steve? Do you feel like you're gonna be putting in more hours than you anticipated? <laughs> How long do you mind to go? I mean yes, it's gonna be way less. Far as this this year goes, because of having to redo this thing, and we're going to have to redo it and say, okay, this is emergency work that we need to safety work that we need to get done, not emergency work, but safety work that we need to get done on these roads. And it's every road that we look at, mm -hmm. every road, and the construction season is closing in fast. Right. Yeah. So that needs to go out. We need to watch that last step. Maybe it's okay. But that if we, we just need to redo it out, we're going to put that out a bit. Let's take a look at it. Okay. Okay, good. So I think it's it's after seven o'clock now, and we're. we're can I ask the window one question? Yeah. When can I get together with you? Because that's one of the first steps before we can get the bills for FEMA. We need to make sure, yeah, and I don't mind do it. I don't mind getting them to the contractor or talking to the contractor. Yep. So we do it tomorrow or we Thursday. We can do it. Um, let's see. We can do it tomorrow morning. Would you like to do it tomorrow morning? I don't think I have anything. Mm -hmm. Take a what time? You name it. Well, we do that. Did you guys ask Linda to go back for a certain amount of money? Did you guys take a magic number? We need that three million. To find out what we can do, what our options are. Should we, uh, should we make a motion that we're? Um, um, yeah, let's wait till let's wait to see what Dorinda comes okay. back with. But I would tentatively give him a number of another one point five. Yeah, another No, I mean I just know that we made a motion for the first one, but it's fine. It'll have I think for it. No. Towards noon, yeah, no, I'm the morning person. You said towards noon. Oh, towards noon. Um, okay, let me look at my schedule because I look. think I have big look okay. at duty. Okay. So let me check it out and we'll I'll check it out and then we'll work out something over the next couple of days. Okay, what's going on? I think everybody said, everybody said, yeah, I think I'll just do it. Okay, yeah, I can do it early after 11, 12, whatever. Tomorrow, I know. All right. Let, let's let's just plan on twelve. Okay. I'll I'll just meet you right here then. Yeah. Yep. All right. Good. Okay. So, just to summarize, where we are, Dorinda's Dorinda is going to go out and see what the bank can do. Um, if that can't work, then we need to see what other options we have. I mean, uh, you know, we can have a special town meeting if we need to have one. We can do whatever we need to do. Um, but let's hope that they're Right. If, if it, uh, you know, I'm going to see about changing the line. I'm going to see about another one year loan. However, you know, we'll have to take, you know, we'll try to be however we can do it. And, right. You know, right. 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 Number two, um, th just let me finish. Sure. Yeah. Number two is we're going to do what I'm calling safety work only and or, and this is the tricky part whatever we need to do to be able to close out some of these projects. So if there's some little bit of work that needs to be done before we can close it out, which you don't seem to think there is, Steve. I mean, we can close them out now. And then or at least the, the emergency phase, we can close out. Two new yeah, projects right now that they were probably close to being done today. If they're not done today, they'll be done tomorrow. And they're done. Yeah, that means all of them are done. Okay. And there's no more work. Okay. But we, meaning the town, have more work to do. Yes. 
a lot more work to do. So in our work, our regular daily work, we need to assess what realistically we can accomplish between now and snow time. And if there's a shortfall where we don't really think we can do that, then I think we need to hire help. I don't think we have any choice. But if we, if we go out and we're going to decide this, Dorinda's got a charge. Yeah. We're going to have a meeting to come back and and hash this over. I again. think we may need to. Yeah. I think we may need to. I mean, if the bank says, you know, no problem, you can have the money, then then I don't think there's any any emergency. But if they say, well, you know, if you're going to do this, you need to do it now. Who knows what they're going to say? Right. But well, we can have we can have special meetings. We've done it before, and we can we can do it again. I just want to be sure that as much as we can, the roads are safe for winter time. And I know that's a huge challenge. Well, in actuality, we're better off hiring them than trying to use our own road crew because we'll get paid on because we won't get reimbursed for our own road crew to be doing the work. Right. So that's why if we're going to do it, you really do want to go out to bid. Right. Well, let's see what the, let's see what the bank has to say first, and make sure we have some way to get the money or some kind of plan how we're going to get the money. Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. Does this part of my ignorance? So the Vermont bond bank. This was this you can explain about that. Vermont bond bank. You can only go out to two times a year, yeah. and you have to apply in advance. And they only issue the money like at this time of year and that time of year. Um. So that's why you're better off going through because because you know that they uh yeah they, they're 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 reaching out to this pal. Yeah, I saw that, okay. but you've it. got to apply to it, and it won't come through as quick as this money will. If the bank can do anything, we're better off with the bank. Right. And, right. yeah. That's and if, you know, if, if some of these other programs come through and, and we get the money and we can start to get some of the money from FEMA, yeah, we may not need to borrow all this money, but I think we need to be ready to borrow. When we have to write out that it's almost $900,000 check to the school next month, we got to have that money ready to go. Peter Fick has his hands up. Oh, just yeah. for, just for a no, personal note, or, like the, the first payment of the taxes are due September twentieth. Yes. Have a lot of people paid that already? They've been a lot of people have been coming so in. So you and might paid. not pick up. A so lot. we've been picking up that money there, but I'm being very cautious because oh. I want to be able to pay the school. Right, right, I understand. Do share. So that's where, and the other concern, I mean, I have three concerns right now. The school, the fire truck, and the um, and the paving project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did we get a loan for the fire truck? We can, but it have, we'd have to have a special town meeting. Highway equipment we can buy with select board approval, but fire department equipment we have to have a town vote. Yeah. I mean, and we were, I mean, if the flood didn't happen, it was no issue. Right. So, you know, it, this is just unexpected right. business. Right. Serious unexpected business. And the other thing, the, the other thing that I, I worry about is that 25% match. Okay, let's I mean, not worry big. about that right now. Okay, no, 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 I understand. Okay, so were we through with the... Uh, I wait for this evening. Everybody knows what their mission is. And if we need to have a special meeting, we'll have one. Okay. Special regular meeting. Special regular meeting. Uh, Dorinda, treasurer. If you have any, if you have any, if you have any energy left. So the only thing I wanted to bring up was I finally was able to touch base with RV technology. Should you have questions about refurbished equipment and all of that stuff? But he said that they've been using it for a while. It's not like a piece of equipment somebody's come back and they've refurbished. It's some usually a case where somebody's ordered a server and um, didn't take it for whatever reason. And then they have to send it back to the factory to build it to your specifications. And that's what makes it refurbished. 
Um, I talked to him about our other issues that we had a computer sitting in the corner now for many, many months, and they came and installed that on um, uh, today. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, the other thing was I told him the emails were very important that we needed to get moving on that. So I haven't seen a ticket come through on that, but my suggestion is the service not broke. Let's put a hold on it. Yeah, I agree. Well, at least at least a short term hold on. I I agree mm -hmm. with that. And uh, the other thing, the other thing that I think we should look into is back when we were talking about ordering the server in the spring. I asked the question about, you know, what about not having a server and and going to the cloud? And he said, well. You know, you really need a new server right now. Of course, that was six months ago. Um, and the server is still working. You know, there isn't time to really do with that. I think before we buy any server at all, we need to re-ask that question. Because uh, a couple of entities that I'm involved in, they no longer have servers. Everything is in the cloud and somebody else is responsible for the hardware. And yeah, you pay a, you pay a fee for that. But uh, it takes that off our... Uh, so I'm going to tell them that the server's on hold, but definitely we still want to do something with the email. Correct. Okay. You want to do something with what? Email. email. Oh. <laughs> um, and I have no other financial. Needs. Okay. Thank you. Um, need road issues, correspondence, Sarah. Uh, well, I think you guys um, got the emails from uh, Shelly, who said uh, this was from August 15th, the night of the meeting. I was disappointed in the follow up discussion on Need Road. This has been a problem for a year with no positive outcomes. Since I walked this road myself with grandchildren and other neighbors, also walked this public road, and just concerned about policy. <laughs> You've stopped if you've heard this before. On multiple occasions, I have walked the whole road. There has been large branches played with barricades. Whoa, 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 slow down, slow down, slow down. Oh, sorry. Um, no, I did forward these emails to you. Okay. On yeah. multiple occasions, I have walked the whole road. There has been large branches placed the barricades, so I had to remove them to continue our walk. Trees have also been placed in the road, and I almost fell trying to walk over it with my grandson. Now there is a complete barricaded black tarp with posts. Although the town does not maintain this section unless I misunderstand the class board guidelines, this should not be allowed. This class four road goes straight to the interstate state right away. It should not be blocked in any way. I appreciate your input on this matter. I understand the flood happened and is taking precedence, but this matter should have been addressed a long time before the flood. I do not understand why the road has to be fixed before addressing items put in the roadway, not in the town's right of way, the actual roadway. And then Evelyn is here. Well, good evening, Middlesex Select Board. This is also one was sent at 7.56 p.m. and one was sent at 8.55 p.m. the same night. Good evening, Middlesex Select Board. There was an accusation made by Samantha Bowden during the general and other business portion of tonight's Select Board meeting that her neighbors were impeding the road. My husband and I were in virtual attendance and wanted to clarify the accusations made. My husband's actually- Sorry, can you just slow down just okay. a little bit? I'm just fine. <laughs> it's been a long day. I know. It's been a long day for all of us. Go well, ahead. we also got these. We also got these. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm just reading because Peter asked me to read them. You don't need me to read them out loud. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Read them. Read them. Uh, my husband, Zach French, and I live in 58 Meath Road. Samantha lives past us at 33 Meath Road. She and her boyfriend, Steve Jennis, and her mother, Shelly Desjardins, from the previous email, made an accusation that individuals were putting rocks and debris both three to five feet into the road. Samantha reminded the select board about her request to have the town send her neighbors a letter asking them to discontinue impeding the road. We believe we are those neighbors in question and would like the opportunity to clarify the situation. Normally, we would not concern the select board with a neighbor issue like this, but we believe you deserve to know the extent of the situation. We also will not sit quietly while being implicated in a lot. I've attached images showing Samantha and Steve placing large rocks along Mead Road directly in front of our residence using their blue Toyota pickup and Shelly's green, green John Deere tractor. The camera taking these pictures was situated about 10 feet from the edge of the property. This occurred on May 21st and 28th of this year. We are sick to hear our neighbor implicate us in an activity that we did not do. We are working with our attorney to resolve whatever civil issues Samantha has with us, but thus far have not been successful. 
We fully support the select board's decision to notify all Mead Road residents of regulations and guidelines concerning the maintenance of class four section of Mead Road. Thank you, Evelyn and Zach. And that's the correspondence. Okay. So thanks, sir. Thank you. So where we were on this, yes. Hi. Okay. This is Shelly. I wrote the first letter. Um, that's all I've done lately is study um, the right of way, the roads, the legislative, our policy. Um, Sarah has a wonderful handout that says the public right away in you, uh, which talks about the road in front of your house or along your driveway. It's probably a public highway laid out by a formal process in the select board years ago. But um, bottom line, from the pin on your property, the right of way is usually three rods, 49 and a half feet wide, which includes so the town or the power company cut down trees, smooth out curves, and and telephone lines. Um, the town doesn't have a right to re reroute water from an actual stream, cannot raise the roadbed so it prevents the neighbor and have the water natural flow go onto somebody else's property. Um, it's a wonderful handout that Sarah has. Uh, but then the V trans, the same thing. It's like 20, I think it's 24.9 feet um, from to the center of the road. Doesn't mean that each owner owns the other owners right away. Um, there, I, I, I just said, all I've done is study of this. And the, the main thing is that there was a court hearing on it saying that although there's limitation on land owner liability, when it is a, a right away of the town, not for people to vandalize or impede on somebody else's property, that the fact that the owner has made land available for consideration for recreational uses shall not be construed to limit the property right of the owner. Now I walked down this road, um, I did help Samantha, and I'm talking as a resident, not as a lister right now, um, but I worked for the government for 35 years, so I believe in the law, and 24 or 25, whatever it is, 25 foot from the center of the road, um, the town has access. On your right of way, it's still your property, but the town has an easement for repairs, so you can put things along there as long as it's not blocking the town from doing their job. What my feeling is you cannot put things into the road, which is being done. If you look at the, the validated pin, it's showing that the road is being shifted. And that's one big issue. But the other issue is I do walk down that road. I hunt on that road and I bring my grandkids down that road and I'm walking over trees that are put in place. You cannot go down the class four and branches. And now it's totally blocked off. So you can't go down because it's right now it's a class four right to the interstate. And I bring my grandkids down, they can see turkeys and deer or whatever. Now it's totally blocked off and put branches on each side. I think that people just gotta understand what, what the right of way and what the road is. You can't change the alteration of the road because you want to. I, I, I'm very strong about the law is gonna be for everybody not just one and just not because it doesn't want to be addressed. And, and my biggest thing here is it says um, the select board will hold the hearing, uh, hold the hearing to resolve disputes. Um, bottom line, we can show photos and photos and photos, but things can't be put in the actual road. The right of way is one thing. I, don't, I think there's no dispute there, but not in the actual road. I think you guys did a great job, but I think this has gone over for like a year now with no, with no results. And it's just, it's very um, disturbing that what's going on here. Thank you. I, I'd like to, I know Evelyn, you want to speak, just, just hold on one second, okay? So what we were trying to do here was determine, first of all, where the road is, okay? Correct. And we have, not, we have not done that. And that is the hold up. Somehow, and I'm going to recommend to the select board tonight that whether, whether you have to hire a surveyor or whatever we have to do, we should determine where the, I went down there. I can't tell where the road is or where it was. Um, okay. I know, wait a minute. Stop. Let me finish. Okay. okay. We need to know where the road is. Once we know where the road is, then there are two issues. There is the right of way, which is the three yards you were talking about. Three rods, excuse me, not three yards. Three rods, okay, right. which may extend and often does extend onto residents' private property, okay? But there's then the passable roadway itself, which is a narrower thing. And I don't know what, is there a 22, 22 feet. feet? 
22 feet. So, you know, we got two different situations. We got the right of way and we got the and we've got the road itself. We have a highway ordinance which spells out very clearly what residents are able to do in roads. And mostly it says you can't change, upgrade, repeat, or do anything to the road without prior approval of the select board. So whatever's going on down there, if it's happening in the roadway or blocking off the roadway. Or the right of way, I think. No. Not the right no, of way. No, not the right of way. Well, wasn't there the reference to the class four? Well, the class four is a road. Right. So there's so a road the blockage of the roadway. That's a blockage of oh, the roadway. Okay, same. So. Of the 22 fit wide road? Right, yes. So my recommendation is, and we'll we'll see what the select board has to say has to say tonight, but somehow we need to put an end to this. And the only way to start putting an end to this is to determine where the road is and mark it so everybody knows where it is and then take it from there. And whether, whether it's you folks or, or you folks or whoever it is, if you continue or do violate the town highway ordinance, then we will have to act. Can I, can I speak one more time, Peter? Okay. Hold on a minute, Shelly. Evelyn wanted to speak. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity to discuss this with you all because as Shelly said, we completely agree this should not be a town issue. We should not be taking up your time. We should be able to solve a civil issue. Um, as as Shelly had mentioned, this has these similar, these and similar issues have been coming up for over a past year now. And we, myself, my husband, Zach Frank, and I have tried relentlessly to resolve them. We reached out or we reached out early on to the select board and the select board basically ignored us and said that this wasn't an, an issue for the town. So we said, okay, we're gonna try it on our own. We uh, secured an attorney who was trying to help our, help us figure this out. He reached out to Sam and we heard no response back. So we reached out to the Middlesex, uh, or excuse me, the Montpelier Community Justice Center to reach out again to try to work this out through a community justice um, initiative. We received no response. Um, so we were basically at, at, at a loss. Um, and so now I, I will mention as um, uh, she read in our, um, Sarah, excuse me, Sarah read in my email that um, referenced our attorney. I will not comment tonight on active litigation. So that's just out there. I also will not comment and engage in the he said, she said. Um, I can tell you right now, a lot of what is being bandied about right now is completely false. And we welcome all of you to come down the road and take a look for yourself and see what's really going on. As we said, we would have loved, we would have loved that from the beginning. And unfortunately, it has come to this. And I am devastated, as you can see, that this is happening. My professional career is at stake over something like this. I am a public servant for the city of Montpelier. And trust in the community resides in trust in me. If people don't trust what I have to say and believe me, then I don't have a job. So it is extremely important to me that you hear this and that I implore you to have an open mind at the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Steve. Peter, is it all right if I ask to make a question directly? Well, ask the board, right. but yeah. yeah. So last fall, we reached out and over the last year, we reached out to Vic directly asking whether or not Evelyn Prim and Zach French had permission to make alterations to the roadway, which mind you, the response was no. And each time they did so, they were breaking the law. That's fact, can't argue that. Okay, so if you wanna talk facts, I'm willing to do it with you all night long, but it's factual every single time that you made an illegal alteration to the road or your husband did, you were breaking the law. Every time you altered the course and flow of the roadway, you were breaking Vermont state legislation, okay? Every time you did that without permission, there's no denying that. There's nothing that you can say or do to prove factually otherwise, period. So you can say this is a devastating travesty all you want, but the facts are the facts at the end of the day. Okay. Got it. I just, okay, is, there, is there like a, a process that could involve mediation in tangent to the surveying issue where it could go into, is, does the town have any kind of precedent? For that? No, we really don't. We really don't. I mean, I, again, I think, you know, we've heard a lot of allegations from, from both sides. 
I've gone down there and looked at the situation down there. I know Victor has, I think others have. Eric. Eric's been down there, others have as well. We need to determine, and, and there are likely to be varying opinions on, on where the road actually is. But before we can know what's going on down there, we've got to know where the road is. Yeah, Victor. Was that the set precedent here on um, Macaulay Hill Road? There was a discussion between uh, myself and Pat Freeman, where the center of the road would yeah. be. You said state statute. Yeah. The center of the road is where the center of the road is right now. In other words, you would split the looking at the road to see what you see for the right of way. I mean, not the right of way, the road, travel park. Yep. Divide that in half, the middle of it. So here's the problem. Okay. The allegations are that the road's going to move. So to say, to go down there now and say, well, the road is where the road is, I'm not sure is a fair okay. resolution of this. I think we would get substantial objection from that. Okay. So that's, I agree with you. If it's a road that's been there for a long time and the ditches are clear and you know where the road is, the road is where the road is. I don't know what went on down there. I don't know what went on. Well, it's very difficult to tell where the where the road was and where the road is. In my view, I was down, I mean, I was down there this spring. But she doesn't but, Sam have her, her pins for her for her property. Her property would be on the 25, 24 foot nine inch line, I would think. Point. Well, it depends on what the deed says. My my deed says my property goes, I mean, the right of way extends onto my property. Yeah, yeah. But 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 not the roadway itself. It's Samantha. So a couple of things. Um, everything I've come to you about is nothing personal. Nothing at all. I'm not bringing up any personal issues that actually doesn't even pertain to any of you. Um, so you don't need to hear it. This is the road. And, and this is where I need to come to the select board because it's impacting the actual road. It's a town road. I've contacted attorneys. I've contacted the police. Everyone directs me to you. So I'm only yeah. coming to you with an issue for the select board. My property has been surveyed. I have pins. So there's two pins. If you want to know where the road is, I mean, you could you could hire a surveyor. I already have. So there's already two pins where you can find the center of the road. Well, then, then our survey should be very simple to accomplish. But I feel like we need to do this. Can I, I think all of us. What? I think the whole board. I think the whole board should go down there. Well, yeah, Randy well, we and I go have gone down to visit them. We're visiting Evelyn tomorrow. Um, can I uh, have a suggestion as well that in visiting uh, last week and actually seeing the, which I believe, Shelley, is what you're talking about when you take your kids down for a walk, I believe that the board should turn that into a trail because that is not a class four road. That is like a trail in the woods and no car is driving down there to the interstate. So that piece up until the river, there's not even a bridge to go across. The bridge is gone. So you can't even get to this road. So my suggestion would be that at some point we turn that section into a trail that is class four, figure out what it is, because it's not even clear what, what part of that is the class four. Turn it into a trail so it's still town owned, but it's not anything that we have to maintain anymore. And that we only deal with the class four that goes up to the river that basically that post that ends the road. That would be my suggestion. I, I think that's fine, but I think I think right now the situation at hand is to determine where the road yes. is on the travel okay. portion of the road. And if we turn it, if it's appropriate to turn it into a trail down the road, we can certainly look at that. Uh, I would just ask that well, especially as somebody new on the board, that the he, you know, the two different opposing opinions and um, and basis of what is fact, is there a way that we can just table that and start fresh? The survey, the decisions made, no more emails, no more back and forth. That once the survey is done, the select board will make the decision, and then it's it, that that there's no more. Um, rehashing of history i don't disagree with that i mean once we know where the road is our our town highway ordinance is clear yeah and i know you've all reviewed the town highway ordinance. so you know the ability to upgrade the road change the road 
change the way the drainage comes off the road. Any of that cannot be done without select board approval. And up until this point in time, I don't believe there's ever been select board approval. Maybe there was many years ago, but not in recent times. And that yeah, we would right. limit discussion moving forward. Yes. Okay. I would, that would, and I don't I know how quickly we can get a get a surveyor out there, but I would hope we could get somebody out there in the next 30 days. Yeah. Before you know, before the town incurs costs and something like that, I guess one of the questions I have is: Is there a dispute as to where the fins are today? I mean, we okay. we we've, we've gone down, and like Liz said, we met we met with with you folks last week. You showed us where the fins were. Did we be discussing prop, with property line fins? Yes. Yes, we do have a dispute that. Okay. So that was my first question because before the town incurred cost, if there was agreement to where the fins were, the property, the property line fins are not marking the center of the road. We need to know where the center of the road is. Right. But if, if there was no dispute thing. from the pins, then we could establish where the center of the road is. We know what that measurement is. And if they didn't dispute pin location, then that's easy to define. The only thing, the only thing I, cost. The only thing I would tell I, I appreciate what you're saying, but depending on what the language in the deed is, their land may come to the edge of the right of way or not. I mean, my land definitely extends into the right of way. Oh, so anyway, yes. So the sure. survey map and the surveyor, so it's Chase and Chase that I've used. I'm actually resurveying because pins have come up missing. Um, but the pins they're placing, they're 24.9 feet from the center of the road. So that's work that they've done. And you can contact them to get whatever research they've had. I find it crazy for the town to pay for a surveyor when I already have. Um, but yeah, and the well, bridge, we'll the bridge reach out, is we'll reach out to Chase and Chase and see what they have. If they if they are confident where the where the center of the road is, maybe we can accept their work. I don't know. I think you might want to get a second opinion. But let's have... let's let's take it one let's take it one step at a time. Okay. What you're what you're saying, Peter, though, is your their deed, mm -hmm. somebody's deed might read that they own it to the center of the road. Yep. Yeah. And and the pins that you got there are your property. Right. But that isn't saying it's the center of the road. It's That's all saying, I'm saying. It's not saying it's uh it's uh, 24 foot right nine inches to the center. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, okay. I want to I want want to know where the road really is, where the road legally exists. And if there's no way to determine it, there's no way to determine it. But I have to believe there is. And then we have to follow up with the letter to all parties on the road that remind them that no changes can be made to the road. Everybody's going to get another another copy of the highway ordinance and say, here's the process if you choose to change the road. And if you do change the road, not in compliance with the highway ordinance, you're at risk. Yeah. Sarah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Clark, I just want to clarify a couple of things. One is every property owner owns to the center of the road. Yeah. Period. That's what you have as an easement. The town has an easement that is 49.5 feet. Someone owns the land. That you have. Otherwise, if you discontinue the road, you have a bunch of band aids just to, we all own to the center. We just have an easement. The other thing is, I don't think we have it. I don't think you're referring to the ordinance. I think you're referring to the class four roads and trail policy, which you last. They just okay, got to yes. Just want to be clear about that. Finally, as, uh, as, as a town clerk here, noting the research that's gone through with this, I mean, we had the historical society, and this is not an easy survey. This is not an easy, this is really costly. So if you're going out and getting another one, I mean, I think there are some surveyors who probably wouldn't do it, right? Have you recorded that survey map yet? No, no, I haven't finished because I want to meet with that one. Okay. But if you recorded the survey map, then it becomes a legal document. Yeah. Oh, and, and I anybody can have access. Doing, yeah, I plan on doing that. I just want to say yeah. we, we have access I from Chase and Chase Surveyors, the survey that was done in 2015 for 33 Mead Road. We are perfect for my husband and I were perfectly happy with that survey that was done relatively recently. Um, we are you 33? No, we, we used to be 33. It's funny, actually, our the deed to our house says 33, but it's 58 now. Um, and that property is now 33? Yes. Like is that the survey that you're talking about? Correct. Yeah. So 
So you're in agreement with the survey that Chase and Chase did for in, their property? In 2015. For their property, correct. Not the most recent, we haven't seen the most recent one, so I can't tell you what that looks like. But we're, the, the, the one that was done in 2015 is public and we, we are perfectly happy with that one. So that one was wrong. So Deb Drakenberg owned the property at that point, it was 33 Mead Road. And there's there's a passage that goes onto my property. You guys probably remember it goes around. So the pin is on this side. So Chase and Chase were incorrect. And when I purchased the property, I reached out to them asking them about that pin. So the map that I showed you when you guys came out, it was corrected, I think in 2018, where it shows that they made a mistake because they could literally come out and see the bridge in the stream. It's still there to show where the where the bridge was, where the center of the road was. So they corrected it. That was wrong. So the most recent survey was the 2018 survey yes. that you're that you're discussing, yes. which you are not in agreement with. To be I clear, I haven't seen that one. Okay, I haven't seen the only. Okay, one here's I here's what I would suggest. Here's what I would suggest. Let's get, if you're willing to share the surveys with us before we go any further, let's look at the surveys, the two surveys. And we can take testimony about who says what's correct and who says what isn't correct. I'm not interested in incurring a lot of expense of the town. If you guys can agree where the road is, then we're off to the races. If you can't agree, we'll have to figure out what we do. Yes. Um, a couple of things. One, I'm going to strongly protest that. The, that the town ignores and not send out a letter immediately for people to assist, cease and desist, making illegal alterations to the road without permission. Because while you're having your conversation, another, I don't know, however indefinite amount of time is going to persist where they continue doing these things. But on top of that, I would like- Stop, to please stop, okay? Number one, I think we can do this very quickly. Number two, Everybody can look at that class four road policy or the highway ordinance. That's what the rules are. In terms of determining who's violating the rules, until we know where the road is, we can't tell who's violating the rules. I can't tell. You and say one thing, they say something else. I don't, I don't know. What if, they, what if they violate the rules? We don't have a, we don't have a police department here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know what what would we do well, if here's, here's somebody my, is violating. Here's my response to the board on that. I would like to cite Vermont legislation, chapter 19, BSA, subsection 952. The town shall properly maintain the drain, the dish, and the water course to keep it in good and sufficient repair. That is your legal obligation as the as as the board. So I'm not going to settle with. Well, we just don't know, so we're not going to do our job. I don't think that's what Liz was saying. No, I wasn't. I was saying if someone if someone breaks the rules, I'm not saying you're right. We it's not, it's not, but it's not that they're just breaking the rules. It's that each time they're breaking the town rules, they're breaking Vermont state legislation. They're actually breaking the law. And is the town's legal obligation to do something about that, according to the Vermont State Police? How do we know that what you're saying is true? We well, look up the road. legislation for yourself. No, not the no I understand the legislation, but if we don't know where the road is, we can go down there and you can say they did this there and they did that I there, and they did that. Where the bridge is look, the road and you look guys. Paul has a public Okay, I know. He's got his hand up. Paul. Uh, Pierre, just, just so everybody uh, is a where uh, road form and knowledge 33 is actually referencing the town highway number um as far as our roads they all have a, an individual number notch road just happens to be 33 so any property the prior to e911 a lot of times would have been referenced uh as uh, number 33 notch road my property was at one point as well i've actually still got property uh on the old class four section headed to Colby's, that's still 33 Notch Road. So uh, just be aware that that the reference of 33 Notch Road is not an actual address. It's it's town, town highway number 33. Thank you, Paul. All I'm saying, guys, is before we can determine who did what, what's legal, what's illegal, whatever, we've got to agree on where the road is. And if you guys can agree where the road is, then... We can take whatever action we can take. Yes. 
I don't think it's a matter of us agreeing where the road is. I think it's the facts. So I've hired a surveyor. I didn't like hire a friend. You know, they've done the research. So I think the best bet would be to contact them. If you guys want to see the research yourself, you're welcome to. But this isn't a friend. This isn't my opinion. This is a professional surveyor that I've hired to have placed these pins here. No, we and, understand that. And I even understand if, that. Another point when you were talking about further down and trails. So I'm not super familiar with trails in general, but if that were a trail, should they, should trails be blocked off? No. No. But no. I'm just saying that, that then then the responsibility for, you know, like we're not going to go out and ditch that to even get across, right? Right. So like and that. that's not what's being asked. Yeah. It's being asked to not block it. Well, I'm, I'm just going to say one more thing. We need to finish this for tonight. And I know you, Shelly, you want to speak. Get us that get us that 2018 survey. You have not seen the 2018 survey. Once it's here, we will let you know it's here. You can come down and look at it and see what you what you think. And if you guys can agree where the road is, then we'll know what the next step is. And I think we can do that quickly. We can't do it as quickly as if we, we have to go out and, and get a survey. And I would hope we wouldn't have to because it's going to be expensive. But if you're willing to share that survey, Chase and Chase is certainly a, a reputable, licensed, real deal surveyor. It's not somebody who crawled out of the woods one day and said they wanted to do a survey. So I think whatever whatever they have done would be very credible information, but I haven't seen it yet. And uh, That's fine. I'd like, yes, sir. To make it a legal document, it really should be recorded in the land records. Otherwise, it doesn't have any tuts. So are you guys willing to have that survey recorded in the land records? Not yet, because I'm in the process. So the 2015 is the last survey, but like I said, there's missing pins. So now I'm having it surveyed again. So I'm in the process of having the surveyors come out again and paying them, and I'm going to wait until they finish to, to record don't you, it. Don't account. you have the 2018 survey? Yeah, yeah and, I, and I showed Liz and Randy when they came out that survey. Has that been recorded? No. But I Why wouldn't you? you and you said I should wait. But it's wrong. Uh, she thinks it's wrong. You think it's 2018. No, it's well, missing pins. It's, it's missing, missing pins. So there's... On our property, it's missing pins. Oh, yes. It's so, but it's my order. But did the pin, the, the, the pin show, show on the survey map? No. Yes. Yes. But they're not pins regarding the road. So these are different print pins on the property so that are missing. So I. But you said the survey indicated where the road was. Yes. Those pins aren't missing. Uh, Those set, pins are still there. The section of the road that is in question. Yes. The pins that we Here's have. What I, I mean, I, show that. You know, you, you've got to do whatever you're comfortable doing, but to move this process along, I, I would suggest record the 2018 survey. If you come back with something else that needs to be subsequent to that, you can always have that recorded. Is it on my one? Um, it is. is it on my Do you know? No. It's a paper. Uh... Yeah. So, yeah, hold on a minute, Shelly. So, where do they go to get a transfer to Mylar? Back to the surveyor. Yeah, so you, you just have to pay more. But, it, like I said, I'm in the process of having another survey. So, that's why I'm waiting. So, I'm not paying to do the 2018 and then the two th and then this when, year. When do they expect to be able to do that survey? I don't know. But I can show you the 2018 one. Like, I can send you that. I, I don't even think that the original one from Deb Drakenberg is my life. That's not even my life. So the one they've seen, they contacted the surveyors to get. That's not in my life. The law changed. So that fact looked to be old. So right. have some new survey maps now by state staff and they have to be on my life. Yeah, so, but I still have the map. So if, if you want to see well, that, we can, map, we can accept or, it, won't be recorded, but we can accept that survey map so we can look at it. Uh, correct. You're going to get it, you're going to end up in a lawsuit about when you do something that's legal document. Huh. I'm sorry, I'm speaking as a town clerk. No, 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 I understand. I understand. Do we have any idea what the cost is to have it transferred onto Mylar? Oh, no, I would call to and Jason and ask them how much would it cost to transfer that map onto Mylar. Yeah, I don't know. And that's twenty five dollars to report. Go ahead, Shelly. The only thing I was going to add, because I, I was listening to what Lid said, which is a good point, is if someone doesn't follow, because this seems to happen quite often on the road, is that 
I would almost think that what you would do is if the person gets a fine and doesn't pay it, you put a lien on the property and then they'll pay the town. I mean, it's, it's got to end. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I didn't understand that. But the, pro the process is, and I, I've got to double check this too, but I believe having looked at this in the past, we issue a ticket. If somebody, if somebody violates, violates our town ordinance, we issue a ticket and then it goes through the state process. If the ticket is subsequently not paid, then it becomes a lien against the land, I believe. Which it would stay until they would so sell the property. They pay it. Or they, or pay, they, it, or they it. pay it. Yeah. yeah, it's not like, okay, it's not like land's going to be taken. I'm sorry. I mean, we're not going to not gonna go down there and beat somebody over the head. But is there a chance that we could perhaps, not that I want to take the whole select board's time, that we could videotape current they and then have videotapes but but it's something that would be non-partial part something that would be in, independently viewed um because it, it's still even with both videotapes and I, I don't say anybody's it's just with two people coming at us which that i'm telling the truth and i'm telling the truth that is there any way that we can just go down versus having one landowner make an accusation and then we still don't know what's the truth. The problem, Bridget, is what I keep getting back to is we don't know where the, road, know where the road is. But you is. could tell if the road had been manipulated in a way that would be considered a violation. Whatever the road may where, be currently. Maybe, maybe we could, but because when I, just, go, when I was down there, it was you very can't difficult. Any, yeah, you can't, you can't tell. You can't tell. It just looks like a road, and it looks like I mean, the, a road to nowhere, essentially. It's, exactly, it's a road in a field. Yeah, it's not use the field. Right. Was so in front of your house? No, further down. Oh, further that down. piece is yeah. that's what we need to turn into a trail. Yes. Anyway, that's not even a road. Um, but I'm saying that the part that they're saying is being manipulated that would result in somebody getting a violation. It's, uh, I don't know, I'll there's, be quiet because it- There's multiple locations, if that's what you're getting at, Bridget. There's one at the furthest end where the field is that's barricaded. And then there's one up by where the two property, where the houses actually sit, where the driveway jets off and the bridge abutment, or where the bridge used to be. So there's two different locations or a couple different locations that are that are being brought up. Well, I was just thinking that if Sam is operating on the 2015, and I mean, if if uh, Evelyn's on 215 and Sam's on 218, and Evelyn hasn't seen 218, so I, I just uh, you, it's just so mushy. I'm just, I'm just suggesting as a first step that first of all, I think all of us need to go down there again at some point in time soon, but. Before I go back down there, I would like to see the 2018 survey and okay. if possible the 2015 survey so I can see what the difference is between okay. them. That sounds fine. And if you guys are willing to share those, whether they're turned into legal documents or not, I would suggest you get them here ASAP so that we can we can as a group review them and then figure out what the next step is. Has anybody got is anybody in, in where your houses are, where your house is to the bridge? That portion that you travel, that Shelly travels with your kids, is there any violation there today? Is there anything that the road's been ripped off or diverted? Where abouts? Where you're talking, you're coming off, you're talking off the neutral. All the nearest the corner, corner up there. Up to where the bridge was? Yes. I mean, when I first came to you guys, there was a speed bump in the road. Well, no, but I mean today. I'm not talking. Today there's rocks yes. in the road. There's hey, what? In the road. road. That's no. not the roadway. That's the side of the road. So if you, if you look at, if you're going by the pins from the surveyor, which the pins are physically there, you can see them. The rocks that they've placed in the road are in the roadway. Mine are on the side. I still was under the impression, I don't want to labor this because it's getting late, but I still was under the impression that anything even in the town right of way needs permission. No, just no. the roadway. No. Just the roadway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
want them to come on down and take a look after this and you can see for yourself if there's anything in the way. We, we would love it if you all come down anytime. Well, I would suggest we well, Randy and I are going to tomorrow. Um, okay. We have because we already met with those two and we're meeting with them. Yeah, okay. Thirty foot tape again, Randy. It's yours. We got a hundred footer. Um, okay, so can we? Is Thanks, guys. Us? I'm I'm sorry about this. This we have had over the years very few things like this we've had to try and deal with, and this is a good one. So anyway, I, I just feel it should be right on both sides. I think I, I'm just legally saying it should be the same for everybody, not just a select few. You know, okay. I appreciate it. Okay, so I am uh, declaring the select board meeting adjourned. See, thank you, Lauren. <laughs>